club.tv and let me go live on butts live on the butts i live on the butts my name's the tick and i live on some butts also i mispronounce live i lie on the butts <clears throat> uh speaking of not lying i've been playing a wee bit more hearthstone since coming back from your place than usual justin uh-huh what oh uh, great guys what, uh, what, and, what and, uh, it felt like needles in my eyes. I hated it, and mm -hmm. I was it, I was miserable. I'm so glad that 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 I wish I could be one of those people who don't play Hearthstone. Listen, one of those people who doesn't play Hearthstone is jealous of his friends that have the time and can support themselves and play Hearthstone. <laughs> uh, we're on channel what one two three special event one three special mm -hmm. event. Special event? Sp special event? Mm. I'm going to turn off my air and suffer mm. for you all. Special event. Special mm. event. Uh, yeah, whoa, we don't have any chat present. Oh, shit. Ah. It was the chat. Special special event? Put it in your bat. Mm. That is your butt. By the way, that was a that was a fun time explaining to all my relatives at the uh, uh, the family reunion what the special massage track is all about. It's kind of it's kind of rad. It's kind of rad to not did somebody care. Bring it up. No, well, yes, yes, yes. Uh, it turns out one of my cousins is reluctantly becoming a fan of Night Attack podcast and is listening to our shows, and so now I have to know that when I'm talking on the show i'm also talking to her which is you're not no you're not are you sure listen, listen no mm -mm. Hmm. why not god you can't uh number one don't ruin this for me number two <laughs> uh you're not talking to anybody you're talking to me and that's it there's not even anybody listening <laughs> then, then we're done we're, we're, we're done that's the alpha yeah. and the omega it's, that's yeah that's it that's stephen king's it uh huh. asshole clan hello um Oh shit! I didn't hear. Stephen Cogswell sent. Stephen Cogswell sent an email, which are always my favorite emails because they usually come with songs. With music. Uh, what did he say? It it just he just sent an email that said "asshole clan hello." Oh shit! Really? Yeah. Hold on. Wait a minute. It's loading. 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 Uh oh. Here we go. I could Make always silly. Just, silly, I could silly, always silly. just delete the one that nope, I said. Nope, 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 because you cannot delete anything from the internet. You cannot delete anything. <sighs> In fact, you're fucking dumb for thinking that you could delete a single fucking thing. See that rock that I'm taking a shit on? Stop looking at my shit. Instead of looking at the rock beneath it, that's you for thinking you can delete something from the internet. And now we're gonna dance. Come roller skate with me. We'll cut off this homo's head. <laughs> Nobody knows about him because he's got mental difficulties. Who's dumb now? <laughs> <laughs> You're dumb, that's you. Asshole clam. Hello. Hello. All right, that goes for another three minutes. So we'll, uh,. <laughs> We'll give it a full a full listen when we're not prepping for the <laughs> God damn it. Somebody figure out which show we're doing right now. Oh my god. That's amazing. <laughs> Brian, I don't want to be a bit of a diva. Sure. Can I have my face in the screen? Um Yeah. I don't know why. It goes for you and me both. Um So there's that, and then, uh... boodle doo a yep ba boo daddle doodle dee dee Going on Twitter, gonna tell people what we're doing on the Weird Things show. Let me move you in. Let me pen.
pin you in. Pin me, Brian. Yeah, I know. Pin me. Pin me like your French girls. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I'm... Uh, do, do, do. Ah! No. Is, is, is that better or no? Yeah, uh, it's better. I could, my rock. whole face is there. Block. Better if you like my face, you know. Or if you don't, okay. Like, yeah, good point. Let's just delete the whole thing. Yeah. Weird uh -huh. things to Jerry. All right. Did either of you gents look at that shark video that was somebody sent to us on Twitter? I did. I did not. Oh, perfect. Perfect. Wait, Brian, we're going to watch this on the show. Good. I've got the link in an email. I'll send it to you now. We, we, <laughs> well, did, did did either of you guys read the uh, <clears throat> the letters that we got from Weird Things viewers from? Uh, uh, Bryce? Yeah, we'll do those too. Okay, great, great, great. Ryan, we're gonna do an hour of entertainment here. Awesome! I feel like jam packed with weird. Um, I figure we'll lead with the shark thing though, because. Uh... Okay, sit tight. It's a delight. I really want to figure out why. We're not able to show uh, chat, chat. All the chat things say ch chat. There we go. Perfect, Brian. It's looking good, Brian. That's what <laughs> I'm thinking. Um, <clears throat> trying to figure out how to get the chat in here. Remember when you used to be able to do all this stuff by yourself? Mm, dude, it's awesome. Like, I get dumber the older that I get. We've noticed that. I know. You and me both. Um, crap. Welcome to the Weird Things Podcast. If, if, mm. Where we try to find our asses in the dark. But we can't because they're just as dark as the dark. Mm -hmm. We have black asses. And our fingers are numb like a Bill Cosby Tinder date. Oh, Jesus. How, uh... Oh, Jesus. Oh, like uh, a Bill Cosby Tinder date. <laughs> kind of in love with that phrase. We don't know who said that because it's a black guy. <laughs> I know. Yeah, see, see, all of a Could sudden, maybe, maybe this is the best way to do the Weird Things mm -hmm. podcast. <clears throat> How long is, is appropriately long for an unironic hashtag? What do you mean? Like, if you're not trying to do, like, hashtag, my name is Justin, and this is the longest hashtag in the world. Like, uh, if you just, like, want to do, like, you know, just a regular hashtag, what is the societally accepted length? Like, is it eight letters, nine letters? It depends oh. upon different group size. Sure. Who you're talking to. To, to, to be clear, you, you, you don't want to know how long um, the hashtag should be or the time until... You're allowed to do the longest. Oh, no, no, no. How long? Like, so let's say uh, we do like hashtag uh, Diamond Club, right? And we write out Diamond Club with letters. Like, that's okay. All right. So that's a thing. We are trying, making a good faith effort to collect a conversation so people can search for it. Sure. But like, there's certainly, there is a length where it becomes a faux pas, right? Where like, it's, if it's unironic, then it's just like, you know, you could really just write that as a regular sentence. It doesn't have to be a hashtag. Um, let me put it this way, Justin. As a mm -hmm. wise man once said to me, it's the internet. Somebody's always going to be upset. It's a fair point. Ugh, dude. It's a fair I, point. I, uh, I mean, like, but we, can all, we can all discuss general 
hygiene rules, right? Like, not to say that anybody's wrong or, or anybody should be upset about okay, it, but is, is, is it wrong that the moment that you mentioned hygiene, I was I, I eventually went down the mental checklist of okay, I just bathed, I put on cologne, I definitely put on deodorant, I did X, Y, and Z, or whatever. Like, and I made an appointment said, to go to Planned Parenthood, who knows? Yeah. Good man, <laughs> Maine's. Maine's firing. Maine's, uh, Maine's locked and loaded. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> Speaking what? of which, let me hear both of you guys talk real quick. Go ahead, Andrew. I'm Andrew Maine, and uh, it's amazing how Justin can make his voice sound just like mine. Andrew, Justin? Hi, I'm Justin Robert Young. Uh, I'm talking, uh, but really, this is Andrew doing his ventriloquist act. Uh, yeah, man. I think we're good. Yeah. Dude, I think we're good. Are you ready to start? Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, Andrew Maine, give it up, give it up. He's going to start talking in five, four, three, two. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Weird Things Podcast. I'm Andrew Maine, joined by Justin Robert Young. Uh, 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 that's me. My name is Justin Young. And a man whose name is not Justin Young, Brian Brushwood. I've lived a whole life regretful that my name wasn't Justin Young. My name is Brian Brushwood, and I'm a sad, sad, I'm just going to weep here in the corner. Mm -hmm. <laughs> gentlemen, gentlemen, uh, we were alerted today via the Twitter from a listener who pointed out a video it says you got you got to check this thing out and uh, real, real. it's kind of making its way all around the webs so uh, first let me uh, give a uh, credit where credit is due and that is came to us uh, Wait, from R -sharp. R sharp R yep. sharp on Twitter yep said I hope this story isn't too late for t for today's weird things <laughs> thanks so much for giving us credit for planning things that far in advance. <laughs> <laughs> this is the the part where everybody uh, you know looks up online and realizes that we you know develop the stories seconds before we go live or as you guys are talking and I'm doing introductions. <laughs> so uh, we've been talking a lot about sharks in the news. I haven't heard much out of North Carolina about the sharks there. I'm sure they're still devouring people like you know a hometown buffet. but uh, <laughs> uh, you know, we want to reiterate. Shark attacks are extremely rare. It's extremely, extremely rare. So it's not like, you know, we know so little about them because, you know, they're so rare, you're never going to capture them. You're never going to capture them. You're never going to see them. Meanwhile, can we, uh, I love surfing. Can we cut to some video of a surfing competition, by the way? Uh, I will do my best randomly. I'm going to go to YouTube.com. Sure, you oh. can just camera at the ocean and you know a bunch of surfers in the water doing their thing it's normal the shark attacks are rare guys uh so so brian uh, the, uh you, you were if you go to your twitter uh, and just look for r sharp who uh, at reply i sent him the link sharp, too r sharp r sharp i'm brian I, you didn't get the link i sent no, you no no no. i definitely spent all my time looking for r shark thinking oh. it was no. shark. brian no, r, I, sent you, I, I sent you an email with the link there's only one thing in your email it's the link Hmm. I'll bet you think that's a real good way to make no, me. No, I can't. I can't send you guys voicemails or text me anything. You guys are just. I, by the way, since and I don't know whether or not we talked about this on weird things or on after things, um, but since my embarrassing revelation that I had so many, there's an e at the end of it. Yeah, yeah right. just open up your. GD email, Brian, and you'll see the link I'll that I I'll do everything. I I'll you. do whatever you tell me. I roll promise down, to all the trouble to send you an email to do this, and I down. typed it. Oh, man, our sharp's been busy. <laughs> I was about to say, there's a lot of stuff here on our sharp's account. It's great. It's great. This is a great podcast, guys. This is great. <laughs> no, it's the best hours podcast. Hours ago. Look for okay. what he tweeted four hours ago. Uh, Just open up your Gmail, Brian. Uh, 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 I emailed this to you so we didn't have to do okay, this. Okay, okay, oh, yeah, all right, Mm. Now you're just the point of stubborn. You're just doing this <laughs> no, obstinate okay. to prove. No, going to Twitter and looking this up was the smart way instead of opening up the No, email. no, no. What it is 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 that like I'm 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 hopeful that I'm seconds away from finding no, it if I, I if you're, you're just 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 I, fine. Fine. 
Here's an email label. <laughs> I went through the effort to pull it out and to send you an email so you wouldn't have to do this. Well, Dave, well we're here now. You we're should here have sent now. me an email. By the way, I listened to all my voicemails, so I'm email. a better person. Surfer Mick Fanning escapes shark attack in South Africa. There's a video. Play the video. I bet there's an ad. Oh my God, there's gonna. Oh no, there's not. Surfer is out in the water, getting ready, waiting for the next wave. And the shark starts killing him. Oh, right in the mouth! Holy crap! So you see a okay. huge dorsal fin. The surfer's just waiting for the wave. Huge dorsal fin. Boom, right behind him. Right behind him. And the surfer turns around like, and this is like a big event. You hear the crowd react and then a big wave comes over and we can't see what happens. Okay, real quick, for the record, I want to believe that this is like some kind of Justin Robert Young announcer who is unable to not accurately announce what's actually happening. Like, like I want to believe it's Justin, it's Justin announcing this, and there's like the dorsal fin, fins flip or whatever, and he's like, oh my god, and now he's being eaten by a shark. Look at him. He's definitely being eaten by a shark. Like, like, like blow by blow, as if he's uh, narrating a, a <laughs> boxing match. Yeah. I want to believe he's describing so this. So keep shit. playing the video. You got it, got it. This is... Alright, here we go. I was just sitting there, I was just about to like just start moving and then I felt something grab, <laughs> like got stuck oh. on my leg rope and I like instantly just just jumped like away and then it just kept coming at my board and I just was like kicking and screaming and wow. <laughs> see some teeth? Did you get some teeth? I just saw fins, I didn't see the teeth. I was, I was waiting for the teeth to come at me as I was swimming, I was like ah! As if, as, 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 as if he's failed in some way for not seeing the teeth. <laughs> so, all right, for the audio listeners, what? Ben he's, he's still got, is, just so you know, like he climbed on the back of like a, uh, uh, like a sled on the back of like a ski do or a jet ski, and you see attached to his ankle, you see the strap that went to the surfboard. <laughs> <laughs> something severed it yeah so all right so he's on the surfboard this is like a professional uh surfing uh competition and uh he sees you see this gigantic fin come up and then he starts paddling away but i don't know whether it's the tail or whether it's uh the 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 head of the shark something comes up on the other end of where he's trying to escape to, and and there's an impact that sends him flying backwards into the water. Uh, yeah, boom! It's something smacks well, like the yeah, the shark like, going like, up. Like like you could tell he perceives something's wrong way before the audience does. Yeah, like I don't know, shark. <laughs> So oh, apparently, I guess that is where the the contact came, and 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 based on what he was saying, uh, the sharks seemed to be more interested in the board than than him. Uh, but just nice insane. board, bro. <laughs> um, and I just like the way it's like, well, you know, there's this thing that happened. <laughs> um, this is the the tournament is the J Bay Open, the sixth stop on the 2015 Samsung Galaxy World Surf League Championship Tour. Another reason not to use Android. Uh, I kid, I kid, I kid. Uh, and the lesson from here is, uh, you know, the shark was just seeing what's going on and bumped him and did that, and it could have ended, you know, much more horribly. And a lot of shark attacks, they grab a bite and realize it's not what they want, and they let go. Unfortunately, the victims may lose a limb or something, but it's yeah. That is a huge dorsal fin, by the way. That is a giant fin. Oh, my gosh. Big shark. So, oh. all right. Is, is it safe to say that in our modern era of media saturation that we now have surveillance on, like, 90% of all shark attacks? Like, now that everybody has a cell phone or a camera or a, a camera that connected to the Internet, like, everybody can upload some picture of their friends getting bitten by a shark, right? Like, like we are I at don't full... Think as it happens. I, I mean, mean, I think that, you know, most of the time people in the water and they're away from their phones when they do that. 
and you know you get I, I I'm not aware of a whole lot of footage of this sort of thing happening. We get I mean, the aftermath. Uh, uh, may, the maybe not in in action, mm-hmm. but it's like you know a, a surfer going out and getting bitten by a shark, and and that's just kind of the end of the story, and he just deals with it, and it's just like a thing without any kind of. Uh, you know, uh, uh, at least instant update on it, like in terms of social media, like you got to figure that we're, we're covering, we're, we're documenting. Getting, more I mean, I don't, I, I, as far as percentage, it's still going to be a tiny, tiny, tiny percentage of that, that we're going to see, but it's certainly more than it ever was. And, you yeah. know, you've seen stuff of people like, you know, kayakers with sharks, you know, uh, circling underneath. We're seeing a lot more of it because, of that footage, it's so much easier to get, like, you know, like that. You know, if you type in Go- GoPro video, shows large shark bumping man in kayak. And, you can, and that's, like, a terrifying. This thing happened right near Palm Beach, close to where my parents live. I mean, um, if, 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 if I were to guess, I would say that the percentage of, of recorded, uh, you know, I don't know, animal attacks is at an all-time high, right? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, Brian, I'm going to send this to you on Gmail, but if you want, I can put it in my Twitter feed. <laughs> Let you nope, search. No, 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 no. I'm searching on Google. Ready? I'm ready for um, you. Uh, let me uh, wait for Gmail to load up. Ah! Ah! Stop! Ah! It's the Google fail. Oh, there we go. All right, all right. Um, what I want to send it to an email that begins with a B or an S. Uh, wait, what? Uh, uh, an email that begins with a B or an S should uh, Andrew send to you. Preferred. I'm just refreshing as fast as I'm able. And no, I, no. Which I, which inbox never, do you have open? The one that never, starts with a B or oh, the one oh, that starts oh, with oh, the S? Oh, S, 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 S. Never. I'm, try, I'm trying, guys. I'm trying. Right, we're, look, we're I work great. with some we're eccentric just, personalities, but I'm doing great. my best. <laughs> uh, so we've got this other footage. So this was taken not too far from my parents' house. So next time we're all in Florida, we'll go out and hop in my dad's boat and go there and put GoPros underwater and see what we find. Um, uh, but uh, this is just another example. So like, yeah, we certainly, we certainly, to your point, Justin, yeah, we're certainly capturing more. I don't know at what point we say that, you know, we're going to get, you know, uh, it depends on what we consider all of it or whatever. But by all means, you know, this is not, you know, a rarity now. And... Uh, so this is the headline. GoPro video shows large shark bumpy man in kayak off Palm Beach, then stalks him for two miles. <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! Terrify me! Are you so there was like underwater footage at some point. I don't know if that was at the beginning or if we lost that, but but uh, uh, oh, there we go. Oh, gee. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like so we we see this kayak and we see this fin. Oh my god! And then the GoPro goes underwater in this horrifying oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. footage of a hammerhead for, for, shark. For the record, for the record, I firmly assert that we are less well off in a world where <laughs> GoPros can show us all the things that we are terrified are beneath the sea. It's, oh, it's, are you kidding me? Oh, God. Oh, geez. Uh, and it's I coming towards the hey, cameras. Easily, easily the scariest looking shark right hammerheads are yeah they're so alien looking and, and yeah because like assuming that the largest shark is the scariest shark the largest hammerhead would look scarier than the largest great white right now meanwhile up above this dude's what he's paddling <laughs> for life <laughs> <laughs> oh god so you know, and like it could just be a lonely hammerhead too. It's like, hey, I, guys, I, I, that's what, what, what I wonder. I wonder if the hammerhead's I, like, I finally found a friend. Yay! Everybody wants from me. This hey, fish man. goes with that hey, fish. That there's this fish. This little fish just darted up, friend. saw the hammerhead, and was like, nope, <laughs> and then darted the other way. That dude's completely like, my name's Mama Nedon. I. I yeah. Is this a pedal powered kayak? What is yeah, this? no, they uh, our our friend Anthony actually really got into kayaks a, a couple of years ago, and and that's like the new the new hot technology is uh, the the pedal slash wind uh, sail slash like a traditional paddle kind of uh, thing, so you can just go faster and further. Yeah. I had no I had no idea this was a thing outside of like duck ponds or something like that. Yeah, so that way, I mean, like the the idea is that it, it just spreads out your your you know the physicality of it, so you can kind of go right. So you can make a splashing motion in the water, much more like a wounded fish. Got it? <laughs> Perfect. It was great. 
you know, we have uh, we have several colors. We have a uh, seal, baby seal, baby Blood. seal, uh, baby dark baby seal color. We have yeah. uh, helpless penguin. <laughs> um, we have tuna silver color. That's great, juicy tuna, juicy tuna silver. That's delightful. So, and then chum red, chum red, whatever color you want. Actually. And it actually just lets go uh, what some might call uh, 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 authentic pieces of, of, of foam rubber uh, that look like actual pieces of chub. You know, yeah. just, you know just to give off the, the perfect aura. Yeah. Oh, boy. Gentlemen, you know, I'm thankful that we're able to bring this information to our listeners. Yeah, yeah. you want to know what? So am I, Andrew. And, and whenever I think about being thankful, I like to thank the people that make this possible, which is why we're going to talk about patreon.com slash weird things. Isn't that right, Brian? Yeah, damn straight. You're right with the rightness. You're so right. You're the whitest right, right guy. It's weird things. Uh, it's uh, patreon.com slash weird things is the place you want to go. We're up to 463 patrons keeping us uh, loud, live, and in- independent. Um, wow, man. Dude, I, I, I never in a million years thought that weird things would be as, as, as popular and successful as it has been. And I'm super thankful. Thanks, Brian. I got an email, by the way. Yeah. Uh, about uh, a guy, and I think I'm going to read it on 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 the jury show because there was other elements to it. But he uh, said that he was on OK Cupid and uh, was just exchanging pleasantries with a girl that he met on there, and they were talking about books that they read, and uh, they both found that they had read uh, How Star Wars Conquered the Universe uh, <laughs> because they both heard it on this very show no way <laughs> are you serious uh, and listen i don't want to tell tales out of school but that encounter ended in sexual congress uh and uh, it. so and by listen it, to I weird finally things finally one of us <laughs> yeah and you can have sex with another person that listens to weird things sex not guaranteed uh <laughs> confirm you're with a physician it happens. It happens. We have a very, very intelligent, uh, more so than us. I mean, we had our crowd out there. We had uh, after we talked about, you know, should we get rid of mosquitoes? Some uh, one of our listeners, she's doing research into like mosquitoes and stuff like that. And she kind of wrote this sort of like uh, uh, I kind of like I wanted to yell at you guys or something like this because just we're yeah. just we're just very ignorant. Um, and we apologize because we are. But like I asked her, like, tell us, like, correct us on this Wait. because. Would, would, I mean, I would like to believe we can live in a world where we get rid of mosquitoes, but like, you know, if I know one thing from reading, you know, uh, poorly written science fiction stories and stuff, uh, you know, that 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 butterfly effect. But uh, yeah, exactly. It's when you get rid of mosquitoes, you bring back Hitler. That's yeah. a that's a direct. I mean, uh, granted, direct- we'll save millions of lives around the world. There's that. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm, 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 Wait. you know, people, yes, mosquitoes, no, but yeah, you know, that's, we have, we have a very, very, you know, listener base who I, I, <laughs> for I, some I, reason I don't think, can put up with our, I, know. I, 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 I don't think that I got the same email you did. What was the justification to keep mosquitoes alive? Oh, I think it was a series of tweets. Uh, uh, she was just uh, lament. She mentioned that she enjoyed our discussion, but this is actually her. Uh, field of study and that uh, there were elements to the conversation that get this Brian uh, we didn't account for every scientific vector <laughs> within <laughs> our, our, our casual conversation or maybe any scientific vector or literally <laughs> any uh, but that's that's what I would like to think I love it when scientists and scientifically literate people listen to this show and think of us as your dumb friends who are just really interested in your work we are uh, the, the Shermans to your Mr. Peabody's, we, we're just uh, <laughs> constantly asking uh, what, how this works, and you are patiently explaining it to us. Uh, it, it is my lot in life. Uh, I, am, I am very happy that almost everybody I've met is way smarter than me, and all I get to do is go, but Mr. Peabody, what about the butterfly effect? And they're like, well, Sherman, beep, bop, boop. So, uh, but I'll tell so you what's exciting. why I don't learn is- anything, is because I just translate whatever they say to beep, pop, beep, pop, boop. <laughs> 
We got two cool, uh, two very interesting emails because last week we talked about the inability for some people to visualize things and how this was a thing that had not really been, as far as the literature goes, hadn't been something that had been described or whatever. Sometimes these things have been and just they're just it's hard to find connections to stuff. Like there have been certainly like optical illusions and stuff that people have said this is a new thing and you find prior examples of it, but. You know, this has gotten some attention, though, where aphantasia is this condition where people cannot visualize images or things like, like you know, other people can. And we had an email about this. Yeah, we got a couple of these put together by our intrepid, uh, intrepid producer, uh, Bryce Neshcom Castillo, um, uh, which, by Castillo. the way, thank you for, you know, making us so rich and wealthy that we're able to hire that guy. Uh, but uh, uh, do you want me to read this or? Yeah. All right. <clears throat> Alex says, TLDR, mother and sister both have synesthesia. I have a fantasia. Possible connection also could have been an explanation for dyslexia. Please let me know how common it is among chat realm. Uh, thanks for the content. And here it is. Basically, Alex writes to us and says... I've been following the podcast since its inception, along with NSFW show, et cetera, et cetera. I can confirm that I have a Fantasia. I've always been aware of it, yet never thought of it as being a, uh, either strange or abnormal. I had, a, I had a discussion with my mother and sister about synesthesia a couple of years ago, likely thanks to an episode of Weird Things, mind you, and discovered that they each have uh, spatial sequence synesthesia. Are you, are you are you familiar with that? Yeah, that was a that was a keyboard that Korg put out in like 1982. It was really good. It had a you know really good rhythm. Good old spatial sequence synesthesia. They were both dumbfounded to realize that that uh, it was not normal for everyone and uh, to see dates floating in front of them, or they each had separate or that they each had separate ways that their minds interpret them. Now I get to be the one who's dumbfounded that normal people can conjure visual images inside their heads. Uh, which by the way, that line, that line alone is like, I, how awesome that what you and I do, this is what it feels like to be a superhero is that we could do something naturally and makes, you know, is weird in 0% of the way. And yet to this person, it's a, a GD miracle. Now I get to be the one who's dumbfound, dumbfounded that normal people can uh, conjure visual images inside their heads. I pegged, I pegged my mind just being a product of dyslexia for the longest time, so I thank you for taking the time to cover this. A few examples of how my mind functioned and how I understood mental imagery. Hold on, let me, here we go. <clears throat> uh, number one. Uh, my memories and my memories are just descriptions of visual images that I thought was the norm. That's why photographic memories uh, always sounded like BS to me. No one's able to document all of their surroundings in such details. Uh, when I imagine number two, number when I imagine something in my mind, it's easier to describe as an echolocation with infinite zoom, nothing visual only a sense of space. Now, like this, is, this is the one that I wanted to ask you guys about. This statement, how, uh, I, I, I personally have a hard time wrapping my mind around this. When I imagine something in my mind, it's easier to describe as an echolocation with infinite zoom, nothing visual, only a sense of space. As, as, as two other people who don't suffer from this malady, what, explain that to me i guess i guess when you get to number three it becomes a little more clear okay number three dreams are just the feeling of being in another place with your eyes closed there might be a story playing out but never the sense of seeing it always wanted to try hallucinogen to see if i could have that that sensation okay we didn't need to read that part but yes uh, <laughs> yeah sorry sorry that's on me that's on me <clears throat> Um, uh, that's what's interesting is that, that, that you think about you know, if you close your eyes and you think about your sense of space and where things are around you and your brain's going to build up an image of that. And I know a couple people who are blind, a couple magicians who are blind, they're really quite good magicians and, and, uh, both of them were cited at one point and now they're not and asking them questions about what it's like. It's very, very, very interesting to see, 
you know, how they describe how things work. And, you know, they're, you know, even though they don't necessarily have the same sort of mental mapping that we do, they do have a way of perceiving things around them, you know, and it's, it's like an information, you know, it's a, you could have a picture, you could have a database, they can both tell you the same things. Uh, but think about that echolocation thing. So if you were to describe a dream, you could surprisingly probably do a fair amount of it with echolocation. You could say where you were, who else was there, how close they were to you and what they said. You know, that's that's 80 percent of the 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 you know, the, the, the element of a dream. Right. Like if you're de- describing a dream to somebody. Yeah. I, I mean, in so far as what your experience is uh, in the dream is represented, you know, similar to your experience in real life, right? Um, yeah. Um, I mean, I guess part of what's, what's fascinating about this topic is that there are so many people that deal with it, and yet it isn't something that needs to be disclosed <clears throat> Or uh, you run into a lot of natural uh, barriers for which you have to be like, oh, no, wait, I can't do that. I suffer from blank. Right. Like once we bring it up and we have everybody raise their hand and say, well, who can assign visual memories? Then obviously we start to get these emails like we did last week. But in general, there's a very good chance that people could live their entire lives and just think that their reality is their reality and, and everybody else shares it. I wonder if we could come up with like a test where you tell somebody like, okay, imagine a pencil lengthwise, like top to bottom, tall part floating in front of you, right? Yeah, sure. Number one, like, can you see that? You know, can you see the pencil? Can you see the color? Can you see the pencil floating in front of you? Now imagine another pencil perpendicular to it floating a couple inches in front of it, right? So directly in front of you, it looks like a cross, right? I mean, assuming there's no parallax or no, you know, three dimensional duplicate eye, like, yeah. like, like, are they connected or are they? Well, touching I mean, each here, other? Brian, let me show you this. <laughs> oh, yeah, there you go. That'll do. <laughs> for, um, for for the audio listeners, yeah, literally, so that's what I'm talking about. Like, literally, see, I'm looking okay. at one pencil over in another. Yeah, yeah. So you have that in your mind. Now the idea is to take that image in your mind and realize that they're they're that far apart. Whatever is to say, okay. Imagine there is only one light in the room and it's overhead. What does the shadow look like on the ground? I mean, that's simple. It's uh, pretty much a circle. It's your body. It's roughly the shape of your body as oculated by the object. of. Just if they're floating in front of you, what would the shadow of the pencils look like? It would be a, a, a line. If, it, if the light was directed, you had, you had the, the cross pencil... Floating. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You're yeah, and then one my... was floating a couple inches in front of the other. I, I thought you were asking what my shadow would look like, and I was very uh-huh. confused. I was like, this is an astonishing. We've discovered simple. a whole new thing, Schwit Asia. <laughs> yes. Okay. No, no, no. Um, in the situation you described, you would get um, be a line and a dot. Correct. Correct. The right. line representing the horizontal one, the dot above. So imagine that if we then take that, that light source and we move it a couple inches to the left or the right, what do we start to see? Um, and again, like left and right is funny when you don't know what the starting position uh, is. I mean, it would, it's it would going right. from directly overhead, and if we're moving it to from the viewer point of view, from left to the right, you know. From from a couple of years ago, it would have spiky hair, and it yeah. would uh, yeah, yeah. It would be, be like, <laughs> I thought we were talking about Brian's shadow. Yeah, like, like, there's yeah. only one shadow I care about. Yeah. Um, no, no, no. I, I, I would say I guess the more, I care about. Uh, the more that the light goes to the left, I would say um, it would be, I guess, like a fat kind of T. It would, instead of being a dot, the line itself would be identical, give or take. But the, uh, but the vertical one would start to extend. So it would look more and more like a ziggurat, I guess, would be the way to put it. Interesting. Okay. How about two lines? Yeah, you'd have the one from like in my mind, like the 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 dot would grow into a line. Yeah. The further you go. Right, so right, yeah. right. We, 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 which is why I said ziggurat because like like you know the 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 bottommost tier would continue to be the exact same line. Also, it would be the place of worship for Zoroastrian. Right. Yeah. Correct. Correct. Also, we would slaughter children at you know the top. Yeah, of the Brian and his whole you know Mesopotamia. You know, push 
just to bring it back. Yeah, sure. Uh, but yeah, like these things are interesting. Bring these are like, back. That's that's as old school as old school gets. Yeah, that's but I mean, these, I think these are but these are interesting things that we start. You know, we may take for granted, but other people might conceive of them differently. Yep. Real quick, I'm sorry. Uh, dial back. Like I, I got the instre- the distinct impression that like I had the wrong answer. As I mentioned, Ziggurat, like, like, like both of you guys kind of rolled your eyes like I had said the wrong thing. It's yeah. not that you said the wrong thing. We just didn't make the same connection you I made. I see. Okay, okay. All right. That, that's fine. That, that's fine. I, I just, I just want to know whether or not there was some, like, you know, larger scale thing that I totally missed. We're just, well, Brian, we're not going to tell you over the air. <laughs> Jesus. All right. I'm <laughs> uh, uh, kidding. No, 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 no. I mean, it, it's, again, I'm just making this up on the fly, just thinking, like, man, it'd be interesting to see, like, ways in which you have this is what the thing looks like. Now let's add this other medium in there, like a light source or whatever, and shift it around. And are you aware of how the shadow changes or whatever? And so, right. you know, I'd be curious. Anyhow, it was so, an experiment. That, well, uh, good. I'm, I, well, oh, go ahead, Justin. Sorry. I mean, uh, to, to Andrew's uh, point with the experiment, the idea would be to have some sort of verbal question that would be able to reveal whether or not somebody could conjure mental images in their head or had uh, the, the, the memories of what light reflection uh, looks like, right? Like, it, was, was that where you were going? Yeah, just kind of the idea of, of just saying, okay, here are the objects you're familiar with. Like, if I tell you, like, describe a pencil, you could do that. But say, okay, you know, what's the, what if I put two objects near each other and then now we're looking at the shadow, you have to build up a mental picture. You don't have to, but... Easier if you just have a mental picture and you can just sort of create that. You know, right. you could you could deduce it from other reasons, and then so it wouldn't be like ah. But I'm just curious to think like oh, what are what are ways in which we form mental pictures in our heads? That that I'm a very very visual person. That's why I got into illusion design, and I would have dreams about illusions. I dream about stuff about optical properties and things like that. Like oh, you know, I could use glass doors here and have these light sources here, and they reflect as soon as they open, and something could happen and do this. And so I have very very vivid experiences of that. Um, right. And so ideas would come to me from that. But for somebody who thinks, visualize or doesn't visualize differently, they might have a very, you know, different process to do that. And so I just wonder, like, how how intuitively do some of us think of these things? So uh, along those lines, uh, dreams are just the feeling of uh, being in another place with your eyes closed. This might be a story playing out, or but never the sense of seeing it. Always wanted to try a hallucinogen to see if I could have that sensation. Number four, I have great spatial understanding and how the mechanics of things works, but it's from understanding uh, how something fits together and being able to picture it. I completely understand how Andrew's friend Jim came up with that fantastical puzzle bo- boxes. Uh, number five, he says, <clears throat> thought I could have, I, I, or he says, I thought I could have face blindness due to the fact that as soon as someone has left my field of vision, I'm unable to picture them. Uh, this includes my own daughter, but the overall shape and features uh, have been well documented in my memories, which which that statement alone seems, I don't want to say hypocritical or it's, it's, it's difficult for me to understand that. Uh, number six, very artistic, yet unable to draw anything from memory or, or any pre- preconceived mental image. Uh, pissed off many art teachers because of my lack of, quote, imagination. Uh, any questions or uh, follow up would be welcome. Uh, man, I feel like this is a fantastic opportunity for us to, uh, to, to uh, you know, to, to to get, I don't know, a sense of of what it's like to have this. Well, I'd be curious too, like the shadow thing. I mean, is he can like you might write us back, like Andrew? That's the stupidest thing ever. Obviously, <laughs> you know, it does everything that you described. You know, or. Uh, Dude, I saw Cthulhu looking back at me across the Great Abyss. I'm like, wow, well, I've been waiting for that to happen. <laughs> uh, and and it, it bears noting that this was not the only email. We, we, got a, no, no. we got a bunch of emails. So thank you so much to everybody who, who wrote in describing uh, their experience about uh, Aphantasia. I mean, it's, it is something so rare and, and always a reminder that not everything that we have to deal with is something that like is is so visible, you know. There is something that is uh, unnecessary of of disclosing. There's so much of humanity that is just well, we got to deal with it. Let's just go ahead and maybe and like the, the limitations are for everybody, and it doesn't necessarily have to be any kind of 
you know, mental or, or, uh, you know, uh, congenital kind of thing. Like it's just, uh, something that we just assume that reality is for us as it is for everyone. And that's fascinating. Gentlemen. Yeah. Yeah. Let's talk about the P word. So about time. Excited. It's finally mm-hmm. time. It's happening. Time. Let's break it down. Just controversial. You know, not everybody can agree. There's been some O-P-P. debate on that. But uh, you know, I think we need to we need to we need to bring it out in the air. Let everybody see out. this, right? Whip, whip, whip out the pee, bro. I'm talking about Pluto. Ah, uh, you down with OPP? Yeah, you know me. So we had our New Horizons spacecraft did a flyby, got some great close-up images of Pluto. It went on a 3.6 billion mile journey. Now, to understand that, if you had to go on a 3.6 billion mile journey, it means that you would be traveling 3.6 billion miles. Yes. I'll explain explainer, folks. It's what I do. <laughs> so, very, very, very classy of you. More, more importantly, I, I feel like it. Uh, the first thing that popped into my mind, and I, I didn't see this as it was actually happening, but uh, I guess... Uh, Justin probably knows about, uh, more about this. Uh, Scott Johnson noticed that on Pluto. That would be Scott Johnson's tweet is the second uh, Google image search. This one right here. Uh, that's him. The best thing about Pluto image from NASA today is the silhouette the silhouette of Pluto. The dog is right on it. And once he superimposes it, the whole world goes nuts. So uh, there's that. <laughs> Which is awesome. What's interesting from a scientific point of view, not to discount anything from Scott's discovery, by the way, let me make that very clear, is that we weren't sure what we were going to find when we found Pluto. And we were fe- expecting the other things out there, the edge of space, it's been, it's ancient. We're thinking we're going to see a bunch of craters and pockmarks and just old man Pluto weathered by the ravages of space. But you, know what, you know what we find? Life? We find, um, well... Well, well, uh, let me put it this way. We didn't find a bunch of craters. Wait, what What, did we find, Andrew? We found a relatively vast craterless plain that appears to be no more than 100 million years old. So when, you know, we had dinosaurs and stuff walking around, strolling around, that that surface of Pluto... um, didn't quite look like it does now, you know, because it's been like some sort of activity, geological activity of some kind is keeping it smooth. Now, in a place like, let's say, the moon, where we don't have any geological activity going there, there's nothing rotating the surface material on there. Crater stay. Crater stay for, you know, long, long times. In the case of Pluto, what happens is that there's something going on there. There's like an icy covering of it, and they found mountains and stuff, which we think are made of water ice, and these things could be melting there could be some geothermal activity taking place there which uh, could imply that there might be water liquid water underneath no. some of that ice ah, tug on it you always Swim do this. In holes. You, you, you you always do this andrew this is your like jam is make me think we're talking about a dumb piece of rock on the fringes of the soul system and before i know it your soul you're, system I mean, that, yeah, brother, it's the soul system. Hey, system, soul system. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, come the on. Quiet dude. storm. <laughs> Water um, on Pluto. Da, That's da, what I'm talking da, about. Da, 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 da. Um, no, I, 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 it's really hard to not just go into all that. Yeah, all that Rich classic Motown. Motown. Yeah. Um, there are mountains. There are mountains on there that compare to the Rocky Mountains, right? You know, made of ice. Okay, real quick. I mean, again, between you and me, don't There's tell- a dark area we're calling Mordor. Don't tell mm-hmm. the other planets. One but, true ring. But between you and me, Andrew, if I was going to rank all the planets back when Pluto was a planet, which, again, we all agree it's totally no. not. Well, uh, well, no. Wait, 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 ah. wait, 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 sir. Alan Stern, principal investigator for the, air, the spacecraft. This is the guy that's like, all right. He's the captain of this thing, okay? 
Uh, you know, the spacecraft was launched in 2006 before the big debate started over Pluto's status as a planet. In August of that same year, the IAU, that's the International Astronomical Union, reclassified Pluto as a dwarf planet. But Stern has always disagreed with the IAU's decision. I don't know what to call this thing except a planet, Stern told CNN. All right, well, you're wrong and you're dumb, and I'll fight you at noon at the bayou. I uh, mean, like, it's his big week, Brian. Come on. Come, come no, on. You no. Gotta ruin it. No. You got to ruin it. I ain't going to roll over for this. Come on, man. You want to come at me, bro? You want to tell me Pluto is a planet? Only one thing, our fisticuffsmanship will settle this. Uh, so you and Neil deGrasse Tyson. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Yeah. You, you and him are going to saddle up and tell Mr. Stern, who's, you know, by the way, uh, he'll be like, hey, guys, uh, let me ask you a question. Uh, what kind of data are you getting from your spacecraft? What kind of spacecraft Whoa. you out there? Oh. What, what are you rolling? What are you rolling? What do you, what, what do you guys got? I'm What's feeling your very you boiled got? right about now. Here, here, here's my point, though, is... Um, which you can only do, you can only boil if you have water on the planet, which Pluto apparently might have. Yeah, well, uh, I mean, it well, helps it that it's got no air pressure, so water <laughs> boils. Are we going to argue about the nature of water boiling? Um <laughs> Here's my point. Here's my here's what I'm getting at. If ah! 10 years ago you asked me to rank all of the planets back when Pluto was a planet and you asked yeah. me to rank them in order of hottest, which means most likely to have life, to least hot, Pluto dead last with the warts on her face, the craters the 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 nastiness, the asymmetry. She was gross, and I thought no way life will ever sprout from that ugly, ugly thing. I was wrong. I was wrong. Now all of a sudden, she turns out to be like, you know, way ahead of Neptune and uh, uh, Uranus, <laughs> uh, like like uh, and 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 um, uh, 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 Jupiter and Saturn. All those left in the dust of all the planets. Pluto, if she does have water, if she is a life-sustaining operation, number Dude, one. Dude, Pluto is like the nerdy art school chick who, uh, you know, gets uh, the, the popular guy dares his other popular she, friend to ask so her So in other words, like, like Pluto's the no. chick that, that takes, the moment she takes off her glasses, exactly. suddenly she's super hot. Smoking and you're hot. Like, How and did I not notice this? And she takes off those overalls, puts on a form-fitting dress. Yep. What I'm saying is that uh, Pluto is the Rachel Lee Cook from She's All That of Planets. <laughs> is, that's what I'm saying. Uh, Andrew? Uh, 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 refute that, sucker. Yeah. Whoa, 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 whoa. We're not hearing Andrew. Yeah, Andrew's You were not meant to hear those words. <laughs> so Pluto has, you know, some moons around it, four small moons. Besides, I mean, it's like, is, is a big one. It has Charon, which is like a big one, right? And, big, and that was mysterious and stuff and has some interesting geometry to it. It has troughs and cliffs that extend 600 miles across the surface, right? Okay. And it's got also, I mean, if you wanted to start some 80s bands, like some really some metal music, like you just just go to Pluto and then you have Charon, then you have Styx, Nyx, Kerberos, and Hydra. Okay, first of all, that alone could be a band. What's up, bros? We're Styx, Nyx, Kerberos, and Hydra. Wait, wait uh, is that right? What, what did Kerberos. I miss? Yeah. Styx, Nyx, Hydra. I'm sorry, say it. So again. they have this thing. So if you, if you go to the Twitter and you follow the handle at nasa new horizons there are some really awesome stuff they have there phobages so you can see like they show like hydra revealed um sweet 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 stuff some great photos of that you know they're showing the uh, carbon monoxide ice on there i don't know some frozen craterless planes discovered in the heart of pluto's heart and a lot of great images there. So it's an amazing, amazing thing to see, to see what we'll be able to get here. And, you know, it's a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful success. It's a great proof of uh, how useful when it comes to gathering information these robotic missions can be. And I also uh, want to, uh, you know, emphasize the idea that you can uh, – there are many different ways in which uh, we can gather this information. And I actually went to go look up, how do you pronounce it? Is it Sharon or Charon? And uh, I actually did that, so I'm being corrected in the chat room. But uh, 
That's fine. So answer me this. If you It is Charon, by the way, as I said. So uh. that's fine. That's fine. So okay, the three of us, we are not talking about settling. We're not talking about living in a place. We're talking about um the government is handing out one year residencies, right? So one year you have to spend on any celestial body in our solar system. Which one do you pick? And and the reason I phrase it this way is because, like, I mean, the most extreme would be Pluto. It's like, you know, I lived on Pluto. Gotta, that's the farthest out, right? Oh, wait, you, you already know? Go. Yeah, because we got to pick our own, right? Yeah, like, sure. Anyway, we can't double dip? No, nope, no. Nope. Where do you want to go? Yeah, Earth. <laughs> Suck. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <laughs> this is the this is the moment that Neil deGrasse See you Tyson, in hell. <laughs> Neil deGrasse Tyson sits there, shakes his head, he's like, "I thought I knew you better, Justin Robert Young. <laughs> You've got three names just like me. I would have expected you to be more ambitious, sir." Uh, all right, so uh, I mean, the the sexiest would be Mars, right? I mean, like if, if we're saying that like you live in a a self, you're not going to die, you, right? You, the government you, you is. Could. You could say that. However, I would make the case that Mars would be the most chicken shit of all of the options. I mean, it's Do practically it's, for name calling. It's practically Earth Part Two, right? It's practically Electric Boogaloo. Who didn't what, like that one better? What I mean, why don't you just go live in a, a Sonoma in 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 Arizona and be all like, "Look at me, I'm on Mars, pretty much." <laughs> Sonoma's not in Arizona. Whatever, Sonoma Valley. Wait, wait who cares? Whatever. <laughs> It's all the people yeah. from Drink Sonoma. Their wine <laughs> from the Sonoma Valley. Yeah. I, I, let me just interject. Uh, uh, the uh, the people who wanted to make Pluto a dwarf planet, not a planet, will probably call it Charon. Just saying, they'll use that. They'll call it that, which is not the proper way to pronounce, you know, the god. So right. just we to clarify. Get, a lot of we'll get just... letters. We'll get letters. We're gonna get letters. So uh, all right, send those letters to Justin Robert Young at Gmail, and in the subject line, say petty bickering about names uh <laughs> for, for, for the record i'm i'm and again in this discussion i'm going to say that you can extend it to uh you know moon's count for this which is why my pick would be io i uh io is the most geely uh, geologically active geely loving geely good old geely geely io Based, um, based on the ben, the, the Benefer uh, uh, film, Gili, <laughs> uh, uh, IE is uh, the best. No, no, no. Uh, like, like I, I, uh, uh, IO is allegedly, you know, as geologi geologically, oh, fuck, I can't even say it. Whatever. It's, it's got <laughs> we need lots to of lava. mark down these swear words, by the way, because we try to be a family friendly show. Right. Okay. Um, the point is, I think I would go orbit or live on a corner of IO. I think that would be awesome. It would be so outrageous and so out there that uh, in all of the universe, I don't know. That's what I want. What about you, Andrew? Where do I? What's the question? I mean, uh, one year, anywhere you want, any stable object in the solar system, you have to you have to do one year there and then come back home. You're not colonizing. You're not going to live there forever. You're going to go and experience one year there. Which one is it? And we guarantee your safety. Yeah, correct. Uh, I mean, I'm going to go with your chicken ass answer. I mean, I'm going to go Mars. I'm going to go fossil hunting on Mars. I'm going to go look for trilo Martian trilobites. I'm going to go look for this stuff. I think that... I think that there might be some interesting things on Io and these other places. I'm excited to see what's going to happen there. But as far as me like to get out and dig in the dirt and go move around and, you know, uh, I kind of like, you know, I kind of like the idea. I like the prospects of Mars because it's, you know, the largest heavy body that we're likely to find, you know, life on. Can I amend my answer? I actually think that that because. Uh, I'm thinking in terms of like once my safety is guaranteed, I actually think that Venus would be the most amazing. Like like I mean, it would be unreal to be underneath that 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 you know, that weird blanket of of sulfuric acid at temperatures that are freaking insane. I mean, you wouldn't see anything, it wouldn't be No. Screw Venus. Never mind. Forget it. Forget <laughs> I said that. Venus sucks. So but but like, isn't I mean the, the the real question here is 
how different do our human minds want to comprehend life, right? Like, if you're on Mars, the uh, there, there's so much that is like Earth that you might be able to appreciate the elements that are different more than maybe another uh, another planet where the baseline is so radically uh, different that maybe it's just you, you, your brain just can't do the math, and, and and maybe it's just so overwhelming that it's it's all just you know survival, and, and you can't you know you can't recalibrate to it. Yeah, I. Th- I- I guess, like, for me, like, thinking where I'll be able to find the most interesting stuff. I mean, Venus is cool, but it's kind of, like, got a melty sort of surface and stuff. And so I'm not going to find as much of the older stuff where if I go to Mars. And, again, we don't have to find life for it to be interesting. You know, we have this idea of – and that tends to be – I think if I were to criticize NASA, I would say that sometimes we push too much that – and there could be life. And I understand that that's the box office hook and there could be life. But – so many of the most amazing phenomenon things we see have nothing to do with that. You know, Aurora Borealis, you know, snowy mountains, you know, the Grand Canyon. So many of these things are these amazing things that have to tell stories about the history of a planet and the, you know, the everything around it that I'm would love to find some examples of that. But if you just go there and like, hey, come see like I dated a girl who's like a geologist and she would send me like a box of rocks. And I'd be like, hey, look, a box of rocks. And then she'd explain this stuff to her, and it was an exciting story that goes back a billion years. So speaking of which, I'm surprised that you didn't go with like some kind of like an asteroid. You, you, you wouldn't try out your experiment of living inside an asteroid? I'm going to have far more things to investigate and look at if on the surface of Mars. Okay, right on. I mean, if you ask me like where do I want to build my like, you know, my virtual reality wall screen pleasure home, you know, I'll, I'll live in an asteroid, sure. Be fine. It's uh, so. In other words, an asteroid is your retirement home, and you ain't ready to retire just home yet. base. It's home base, Bry. <laughs> okay, sorry. <laughs> but if I'm gonna have like a year to like, hey guys, I got stories to tell you. I'm be like, what was Venus like? Ah, it was hot, multi, melty. It was kind of like a brownie made of lead, you know, right out of the oven. This is about Spe- it. Speaking cool. of which, have you have you have you read Seven Eves yet? Are you uh are yeah. Are you, are, are you gonna or maybe maybe at some point maybe uh, I'll, I'll give it my thumbs up i think it's pretty good i cool. think uh stevenson you know it's it's in the top half of the works he's done yeah, i mean anathem is one of my favorite sci-fi books of all time which he wrote so that sounds like an invitation for us to get into picks 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 uh who's got some i got some what do you got uh, I'm gonna go with Aunt Man. God damn it, that was my Aunt. Dick. Aunt Man. <laughs> Aunt Aunt Man. Uh, it's, okay, can we can we, can we talk real quick about Ant Man? Um, I haven't seen it. That's fine. We'll just talk around you, I guess. I don't know. Um, but, <laughs> I mean, unless unless you would prefer for us to not talk about it. We um, do it next week. I'm gonna see it tomorrow. Okay. All right. Well, then we'll hold it off. Yeah, uh, because that was gonna be my pick as well. Whatever. So sorry, guys. Sorry. Right. Can, I can do a non-spoiler recommendation. Sure. No, you cannot, Justin. You can't. I can't even mention the name of the title. Can't even mention the title okay. of the movie. Well, then I'll talk about the, another movie I saw, <laughs> Insect Person. <laughs> uh, actually, you know what? I I do have a non-spoilery recommendation. Uh, I'm diving. I'm halfway into it. But guess what? Launched. I think Wait, yesterday. Do I not get to give my non-spoiler recommendation oh, for oh, Ant Man? Oh, I thought. Uh, okay. No, no, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, I think Ant-Man's really fun and I really enjoyed it. And I, uh, uh, I, I will say that, uh, the, the reviews for the movie, I thought were very, very interesting in that the negative ones all kind of, uh, were either a meta commentary on the state of superhero movies and, uh, the, with subsection, a lamentation that Marvel might have too perfected their formula that a, a film that is not that good is that entertaining, although they never really call it entertaining. They call it mechanical, which is an interesting way to put it. Or it's, uh, uh, you know, a, a apparently they've gone into an alternate dimension where Edgar Wright did indeed write and direct Ant-Man as he was uh, initially tagged to. And they have determined that that fantasy version of the movie was better than the one that we got, which Edgar Wright is 
one of my favorite uh, creators of all time, but I think that's kind of unfair and lazy to just sort of say like, well, everything that I didn't like about Ant-Man would have been better in Edgar Wright's version of Ant-Man. Uh, can, can, can we talk real quick? And again, this is not spoilery. I promise. I promise. I promise. Uh, the first section of the movie, we got to see two individuals, one represented much, much younger than he actually is, and the other much, much older than she actually is, both of which have, you know, currently existing properties or whatever. Why, Brian, that's really spoilery. <laughs> it's, it's not spoilery at all. Yeah, and, and, and it's literally the opening frame of the film. No, you, you, see, like... you see Michael Douglas younger. And, and you see someone else. That. I don't. Why would you say this when I asked you not to say this stuff? Because you're a baby. Come, look, the, the, the point <laughs> the point is. Why do you do this? Uh, the point is, I thought mechanically it was really, really well done. That's all I wanted to say about it. Um, it's great. It's great. <laughs> why would I avoid you... trailers. I avoid stuff to see things so I can just go see it and just unfold I, yeah, in front okay. of me. All right, fine. I and again, what, what I may not matter, it. Brian, we watch things very differently. What may not matter to you, you know, may matter to me. Okay. Well, then I apologize that I. Brian, revealed... you can't undo it, Brian. You I, can't I apologize. Now I got to go to therapy. To you that Michael Douglas is an I've got to go to, you know, my friends spoil me, you know. <laughs> oh, right. you spoil me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> So yeah, all right. I, I, I like it, and and uh, I'm I'm very interested to have our longer discussion about it because uh, I think it's an interesting thing to talk about. But for a movie called Ant Man about Ant Man, I was like, rad. Look at this Ant Man doing Ant Man things, being exactly where I kind of want. Just Ant -Man. so you know, Brian, I blame Justin because I said let's <laughs> no, do it next blame week. Me. Blame, so you know. blame me. Blame me. I blame uh, Justin. Blame me. Blame me. Uh, no, no, I blame <laughs> Justin. No, no, I blame Justin. Uh, no, uh, no, because I have a black belt. In, in talking about a movie uh, beyond Andrew's very specific specifications for spoilers. <laughs> I've uh, just spent more time doing it. Okay, my pick, since it can't be Ant-Man, is going to be... Uh, Aunt-Man. It's pronounced Aunt. It's, uh, aunt Auntie Man uh, will not be my pick. It, instead, my pick will be um, uh, BoJack Horseman Season 2, which just out of the blue dropped last week, and I'm um, like two or three episodes into it. I'm really enjoying it. Um, it's, uh, it's so weird to me to have such comedic talent all gathered together to do some of the least funny stuff I've ever seen. And yet I care deeply about it because BoJack Horseman has become, uh, this meta narrative of, um, I, I don't know, transformation or, or, or I, I, I I don't even know how to describe it. It's not quite a drop. I'm only two episodes in. It's 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 about depression. I mean, like it is it is almost a, a textbook uh, story about depression and self worth self self worth in uh, show or, business. Or self and, worthlessness, right? I mean, it's uh, like a. And what is fascinating about it is that it, especially in its second season, now that it's kind of revealed what the real DNA of the show is, it doesn't need to establish its comedy cred up front in the way that the first season had to do like two episodes of like, wow, isn't it wacky that humans live with animals? Uh, the, 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 the second season just kind of gets into exactly where the first season was. And you realize it's kind of like, the best written dramedy on television that happens to include anthropomorphic animals. It's well, pretty... and, and, and I guess that's the funny part too. When you get to the parts that are, uh, you know, regarding the, the, the literally the sexual relationship between a, um, you know, a, a, a liberal Ivy league graduate and a golden retriever, um, you know, and, and, and you have the, those moments where the golden retriever is like, you don't understand what it's like for me. You leave and I just sit here and w look out the door and wait for you to come home. And when you come home is the best moment of my day. Um, I don't know. There's there's uh, inside all of that is sort of this. Um, I don't know this. I, I, I don't want to call it a wink because I think that does it a disservice. But 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 like this acknowledgement of how insane the entire universe is. And yet it fully commits to the universe going forward. I, I, I don't know. I'm digging it a lot. Uh, I think it's great. I second that. I have uh, two picks that, that came to me via Showtime right now is available on the Apple TV and iOS devices and others. And they have a Showtime anywhere now or just you can just subscribe to it sans cable package. 
and they're doing a trial, which is like I think the first 30 days, it's like 10 bucks or 11 bucks. And, you know, I'm always looking for other movie services that have a lot of movies to watch. And uh, I tried it, and I've been watching Ray Donovan, which I really dig, with Liev Schreiber, who's I think always a neat actor, so I think he's good. And he plays a kind of a Hollywood fix it man who comes from this Irish family with connections to the mafia. John Voight is his father who comes to town, and John Voight is just in his awesome full-on John Voight mode, who is not, you know, they have, there's a lot of tension between the two, we'll put it that way. Very reminiscent of The Sopranos in many ways. I mean, it's, it's a show that seems inspired by the success of The Sopranos and, and, you know, creating that kind of, you know, leading man who's very, very, very flawed, but trying to make the best of things. So I'm in the middle of season two on that now, and then season three just started. So, uh, and we have just got nominated for an Emmy for his work on the show. So that's my pick. And also on their Showtime too, they have Life Aquatic with Steve Zissou. So, heck yeah! Um, have you seen that? Far. Who me? Yeah. No, Andrew. Life Aquatic. Yeah. 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 It's Wes Anderson. No, yeah, okay. I, 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 yeah, well, then why are you always crap talking the wildlife aquatic? How come that's your go to uh, representation of something that's terrible? Uh, I have mixed feelings about life aquatic. Are you kidding me? I loved, I loved life aquatic. I like the second half of life aquatic. I loved the entire like the thing, half. and this is everything, everything from the hijacking on, I this, really love. This might be the part that offends you. I, I, I think I love. The Life Aquatic as much, you know, from beginning to end as I love uh, uh, the Royal Tenenbaums, which you probably won't like me saying. I mean, I don't know, man. Everyone's got an opinion. It's like, cool story, bro. I, yeah, I really enjoyed it. I, and I, I get, it's interesting. Yeah. Cause like I, I mean, I like both halves and I, I, it's not my, it's, I like it because it's such a different sort of film, you know, and I mean, let's do a, a comedic sort of film about this cut rate Jacques Cousteau. Sure. You know, and uh, it, it certainly finds a, I could certainly say that prior to the hijacking, it's this, you know, it's trying to get into this, hey, here's the, it's more focused on Zisu as a character than some other Wes Anderson movies, which have more, let's focus on this person and this person, this person, you know, you take Rushmore where you get, Schwartzman and Bill Murray's character are both very, you know, pulling against each other, and the narrative goes back and forth, you know, between the two. Uh, you know, Twin and Bombs is, you know, uh, several different. You know, certainly Hackman is the centerpiece of that. Uh, Budapest Hotel is the story of several different people. Where Life Aquatic is, you know, we have really one character, some periphery characters, and one character we grow to like, but then realize, nope, it's not going to be about him. Um, but Still, I mean, it's you know, it's a Wes Anderson doing a Jacques Cousteau movie. No, it's it's great. I mean, I think that there's so much to love about it, and uh, I think part of it is that I might have just had unrealistic expectations watching it for the first time, uh, and then rewatching it after that. Like, there are such great performances, uh, uh, it, it, but it was a, there are little details in there too, and like there's a there's a scene where Zisu and the who may man who may be his son you know, are in the hallway and, you know, they're like, they're shaking hands or high-fiving each other over some sort of agreement. And if you look way off in the background, Willem Dafoe's character is doing that with himself. Yeah. Because you're, you're aware of the fact that how much he wants to have this relationship. And so he's, he's often in parts of this sort of, you see him, oh, wait, he's reacting to this thing here. And it's not on, the, you know, I didn't notice that the first time I saw it. You know, I watched it. I'm like, oh, wow, he's really broken up about this. Uh, yeah, maybe I need to watch it again. I don't know. I think it was just, it was one of those things where, uh, you know, Royal Tenenbaums, uh, just being a movie, which I, I don't necessarily think that I wouldn't go to war on it on saying that it's his best movie ever. Um, only because I, uh, you know, I, I it definitely, Hey, take a wild guess, a, a, a story about an, a, an, a strange father who uh, randomly comes back into somebody's life and the siblings have to deal with it. Uh, you know, is, is something that I found appealing even before my strange father came back into my life randomly. Um, but, uh, the, that movie, I, it just the pacing problems. It was just, uh, I, I thought the first half kind of fell into some bad Wes Anderson fell into some bad directing habits that I think echoed through, uh, the, the Darjeeling limited. And then he has kind of corrected in his 
uh, his most recent uh, two films. Uh, but it's a little, a little fatty and a little kind of just in love with every miniature tracking shot and every little ornate uh, stumble bum kind of dialogue scene. Well, there you have it. Um, Justin Robert Young says Wes Anderson is a complete hack. Um, Suck it, mm. Wes. <laughs> Put that on the headlines. Now we know. Uh, yeah, I, 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 I had a different reaction at you know Grand Budapest Hotel than you did because you know yeah. I, I, I get it. It's a great film and a great, great film when you see it more. But it's like, man, it's like I wanted to see more of some other people in that sort of thing and felt like I felt like cheated in some way. But it's an amazing film, you know. Yeah. You know the 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 you know the you know when your weakest film, in my opinion, is you know the Darjeeling Limited. Well, oh, doing all right. All right. All right. Can we can we rephrase that? Like uh, when your weakest film has a completely 100 percent hot ass naked Natalie Portman in it, you've won at directing. That's Which you can just watch in Hotel Chevalier. So. <laughs> OK. Oh, yeah, fair enough. Yeah, she got naked short. in the short film. Yeah. Yeah. Now it's that was. Yeah. Pro yeah. tip, kids. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> you don't have to watch the Darjeeling Limited. Just watch Hotel Chevalier. Yeah. Um, not that we would objectify women in that way. I mean, oh, uh, it's a daring uh, choice by uh, by one of the best actresses of her generation. Yeah. Uh, anyhow, um, there's our pick, uh, and that's the weird things. <laughs> and now we're gonna do after things. Smooth. After the weird things. Smooth. We'll see you guys. We love you. Bye. <laughs> <coughs> Oh, there we Leave go. Leave that Just in. Leave out. that in. Uh, Sixty-four forty-seven. That's when uh, Andrew coughs. <laughs> that's when he turns in an Andy Kaufman. Oh, that's a name. Hmm. Uh, uh, that's a name, y'all. That's, that's a, a name. name. Uh, uh, uh. Don't be lame. That's a name. Hey, so uh, how is the two system system working out for you? Man, it's like like God's own stroke mag. Like it's just perfect. <laughs> God took me took me a minute to figure out what you meant by those words. Those did not <laughs> sound like English until I pictured God as a seventeen year old jerking himself off, <laughs> and then it all made sense. <laughs> He's just looking at it. He's like, man, I just know that there's fun <laughs> ahead for me. Uh, no, it's great. Um, really, the only problem that I had is I was doing a little uh, little uh, jury stone stream on Friday night. Yeah. And uh, the PC decided to reboot for updates. Ah, uh, dude, that's the worst. Um, and, it, and it just casually as if it's the, I don't know. The employee that thinks it's the assistant manager just casually announces, hey, so anyway, huh, I've got 25 updates to do. I'm like halfway. Don't worry about it, bro. I got this. No, it was definitely a thing where I was streaming and having a great, happy and healthy time. And then uh, all of a sudden, like Wirecast just blinked out and uh, then it reset and started updating. And then it was like, all right, we're back. Psych! More updates! Rebooting again! Uh, and Man. so it did that twice. Uh, but then it was back, and it was fine. So, I mean, it's well worth it for what I get, which is a clear and a happy life uh, when it comes to everything else. So I'm excited and thrilled. Is it hot in the studio? You want to know what? Uh, it's actually not been as hot in Oakland, and and therefore it is not as hot here in the studio. And these PR40s are so dank that uh, I, I'm literally running a fan right on my body right now, and it's rad. Dude, that is awesome. Uh, and, and to answer Tom, Tana, Tamaga, Tamadana, 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 uh, I'll do jury as soon as we're done with after things, and then after jury we will do the Russell stream. So. Also, can I show everyone my 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 bliss? Uh, oh, you can't really see it there, can you? It's fading. It's, it's fading, fading like Marty McFly at the end of Back to the Future. <laughs> oh no! Although uh, what's not fading is the fact that I've lost six pounds. Wubba lubba dub dub. 
Uh, yeah, on your on on the uh, the the greens, right? Yeah, no, on the on the eating. Um, you you know, got greens, bro. Dude, I I eat the grass on your street, and I get a treat, and that treat is called <laughs> losing six pounds. Hey, Brian, is there anything we should watch on TV tomorrow? I'm ashamed to admit that I totally forgot that tomorrow was. I can't tell which is greater. The, should we? All right, should we? Should we roll? Because I, yeah, I think yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm gonna yeah. have to right, tap right, out right, as close right, to four right, o'clock as, as humans possible. All right, <clears throat> uh, sixty-eight twenty-nine, and we should start in five, four, three. Welcome to After Things, the show that comes after weird things. <laughs> I'm Andrew Main. Yo, damn That's- straight. Oh, Ryan y'all. Brush people. We're That's, professionals. They, he doesn't appreciate people who interrupt him, but I do it anyway because we have a deep love and respect for each other. Yo, yo, yo. Oh, sorry. Yeah. I didn't mean to interrupt you, Brian. I'm sorry. If there's I'm one thing I hate Robert more Young, than... Young, everybody. Hey, I interrupted Brian like he interrupted Andrew, and lo, the cycle of violence continues. <laughs> uh, hey, man. So uh, during the show, I, I, I don't know why it didn't occur to me to mention anything, but... Uh, Tomorrow night, I'm going to be on a little bit of the national TV. Uh, I, I, I did a thing for uh, Penn & Teller's Fool Us, and it seemed to go well. And uh, what's funny is I didn't know whether or not I should promote it, partly because I signed a piece of paper saying I would keep my mouth shut up until it was appropriate to you know say anything. But then everyone else start, started saying things, then the show came out, and then I was in the promo. I was like, okay, so I guess I can start Yeah, when you're in TV Guide and it'll put your name there, you're allowed to say okay, that. Uh, right, right, right. But now <laughs> there's the second level of like, well, can I say how well it went? Am I no, allowed to? No, not until the show airs. <laughs> That's obvious. <laughs> right. But, uh, baby, can I talk about how I felt through the experience? Or does that only become apparent oh, after the show? Wait till after the show airs. <laughs> right. So anyway, so my, my default option has been to keep my mouth shut. Um, but, uh, but I did go back and watch a bunch of other episodes of Penn and Teller's Fool Us and uh, made me really excited about my short segment on there. Like seeing the way the U.S. edition of the show treats everyone else. Who- oh, they do. They handle magic wonderfully well. Wonderfully well. They do a very good job of it. And, and, and once I saw that, I was like, okay, I could feel really good about telling the world that this is happening. And uh, uh, no, uh, uh, yeah, I'm not going to say anything else than that. I'm done. There are uh, things I'll say later after it actually airs. Man, and they have a hell of a lineup this year. They've had a bunch of great magicians. And I know because having spent... Uh, you know, however many years since I tricks began in the magic uh, field of of uh, coverage, and having befriended uh, virtually all of magic on Facebook, it is literally just uh, one wave of people that I know on Facebook after another, uh, and and they are all great names. They are all amazing, fantastic names that that very much deserve the the, the recognition, and and uh, I am very glad um, to to see you among them, Brian. Uh, dude, I'm really excited about it. Um, uh, separate from that, you, you, you know, you guys tell me if you don't want to bring this into the after things discussion. But, uh, you know, magic is a very tricky profession insofar as you, you, uh, there's a culture inside. Very deceiving, Brian. Uh, it, it, it is <laughs> highly deceptive. Um, no, 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 no. I, 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 I don't know. I'm getting the vibe that you guys don't want to go. No, no we do want you to go. We we're just teasing well, you because you said magic is a tricky Mark profession. said tricky and okay. like because it involves tricks. What I'm saying yeah. is it's <laughs> tricky to rock a rhyme. <laughs> to rock a rhyme that's right on time. It's tricky. Uh, so so uh, one of the things I did was I and, – and I don't know what the answer is. I don't know if there was a better way for me to do it or whatever. But recently uh, I, I, I went on to a magic online forum – because here's the thing. The internet is wonderful. People all jump on the internet. You're not and... filled with enough self-loathing? No, that's... Oh, do, do, do. I, I mean, any, t- any place I go is filled with self-loathing, right? But, uh, <laughs> but, but it's like magicians want the benefit of sharing information with each other. However, magicians also have the difficult position of not... Uh, or or, or of, 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 of having been 
grown up in a field where uh, secrecy is is paramount, right? So it's like, um, let's say you had an online forum uh, for magicians to interact and say, hey, this trick is good, that trick's not good. Here's here's a variation I do that would be helpful to you and blah, 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 blah. How does something like that exist in a world where ostensibly everybody looks to the outward facing public and says, no, magic is secrecy and we never talk about these things. when I mean, clearly you do. You talk about them to each other, and you do it in a, in, in a forum that anyone can sign up and, and take a look at. Well, you know, in Magic, we use code words, too, you know, when we want to talk about things. Like, oh, well, I did the B-switch using a TT. Yeah. You know, okay. fair enough. Fair enough. I was yeah. actually going to say TT. TT is always the one that I yeah TT that I, yeah. that, I, that I see around of of like oh yeah no I I think that he yeah it's very easy when you think of it in terms of a TT mm -hmm. <laughs> or an NW you know so um, yeah I mean that's obviously like you know we we tend to use these code words and stuff and there are categories of magic effects by the way which are not discussed on the internet that are that are you know you get somebody to develop something that's very very limited very very exclusive and you know, part of the agreement when you buy this or learn the secret is like, we don't talk about it on the internet. You do not mention this method. You don't mention how this thing works or whatever because if you spend $800 on something, you don't want somebody to be able to do a Google search and then find out, you know, what that well, is. And, and, and that's a pretty good example of exactly what I wanted to ask you guys is there are people uh, on, on the online forums and possibly right, rightly so – who accused me of hypocrisy because, you know, Scam School is a show all about teaching people how to do magic. Uh, you know, if you do that show that teaches people magic, and again, for those of you who don't know, uh, I, I recorded a video on it, but but there are three questions I ask for everything on Scam School. Is it beginner level, uh, beginner level appropriate? Can you learn it this morning and perform it this night? Uh, second thing, uh, uh, can you do it without ever setting uh, in, uh, foot into a magic shop or buying anything? Can you make it in your garage right, right now? And third, is there uh, uh, a single living individual who owns the rights to it? And assuming it passes those three tests, it'll be considered to go on, right? Uh, on this forum, people say, how does somebody like you who teaches other people's magic, and again, that's true to the extent that those people are dead <laughs> and that the secret is 100 years old. How does somebody like you not be a hypocrite by charging for your new stuff? And so, um, you know, in, in, in it, it caused a moment of self-reflection for me where I, where I had to evaluate, like, why? Well, I mean, the reason is, is because there's three rules. And number one, you know, is it something you can learn today and do tonight? No. Um, you know, is there a living individual that owns the rights? No. Uh, it, you know, is, or, or, or I guess, yes, yes. there is, which yes. keeps me from doing it. Um, and then, uh, uh, oh, uh, the magic shop, like technically, you know, you could make it all yourself, but it would take you three months and cost you a thousand dollars. Like, um, are we, here's my question, is, is it possible that in the world of magic, we're actually doing more harm than good by holding up the principle of secrecy full stop? My, the, and the reason for this being, I understand that we all say secrecy, you know, what, in my mind, what we're doing is we are selling wonder. We are selling brief and fleeting and powerful moments of astonishment. Uh, and with that in mind, I want those moments to be as good and as powerful and as strong as possible. And, and, and I will do whatever it takes to make that happen. Now, in that regard, wouldn't you be able to create more moments of astonishment of greater intensity and greater artistic quality <clears throat> if you had more magicians competing in, against each other? I th I, and, and what I mean by that is, in the 1950s, you had a flood of uh, cheap plastic electric guitars, and uh, 10 years later, you got, you, know, you got the Who, you got the Beatles, you, you, you got Led Zeppelin. Uh, that was the result of the tools being open to anyone. Uh, and my question to you guys is, is it possible that 
this veneration of secrecy in some way possibly harms magic as an art? I, I mean, I don't, I don't know how to answer that question. I can certainly say that specifically there are certain kinds of material that if you're a professional, you kind of want to keep out of the hands of the amateur because it makes it more special when you do it. In the hands of an amateur, it can be done poorly and then it is not as effective. Uh, but then again, you know, and it depends. It's like, forget TV for a moment. Forget those, those environments and stuff like that. You know, David Blaine took stuff that we, you know, that was Magic Shop, the top selling items in a Magic Shop and did an amazing first TV special because... Dime, dime store crap is, I believe, the phrase I used when I was uh, a senior in college at the time. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but it, it was, it was you know, amazing. I mean, he did a great job because most people hadn't seen it. But when you're... When you're a corporate magician and you're a corporate guy and you're a guy that's trying to get a you know a higher paycheck per show or whatever and you're competing against other people like that, there is this sort of, well, I would rather buy this secret or method from somebody than somebody else. I would rather have this sort of – have the rights to this material much like comedy writing or things like that. Like I want to be able to use these jokes that I got permission from as opposed to everybody being able to do it. And, and it, it, you know, case by case, it depends. It really, it's highly, highly variable. You know, I think that there's a, at a certain level as a professional, you're concerned about the idea of certain things being out there because, you know, I have people like I share, you know, they'll teach me some slides and stuff like that, but they don't want everybody else in LA knowing them because if they go to a party or whatever like that, they don't want their competitor, you don't want to find out that their competitor is doing this thing they worked on. You know, in that ecosystem and that competitive marketplace, they're at a disadvantage if the thing they worked on or the thing that they bought the rights to is being seen and done by other people within that system. You know, they're not worried about a guy in Philadelphia doing it, but, you know, it, it varies. From, from my perspective, I, I don't think in my mind there's much of a question that magic is a bit of a stagnant art form um, and that it has not grown at, at a, a pace that it should have. I don't know enough about it. Uh, I have my own kind of guesses, but I'm not a practitioner. I'm just somebody who has kind of been around things. Uh, I, I don't quite know the solution, um, but I do know that, uh, you know, what was, what, what's the, Andrew, the, the, uh, the, the smaller the pie, the sharper the knives? Yeah, the smaller the pie, the sharper the knives, the Kissinger and, quote. Uh, and, and I think that that's a part of it, that there is either by perception or reality or the mixture of the two, an idea that magic is a zero-sum world. And so you get passions and defense mechanisms that I don't think would be as passionate or as sharp uh, in a world where people believed that the m money or credit for magic was larger than what is it is perceived or is in reality right now. And, and that's where you tend to get... Uh, you know, it's not just a disagreement, it's a destruction of the art. And it's not just, you should do that, that or that's bad, and you did it. It's, you should never be trusted again. You know, like, that's, I think, sometimes that, that's where that comes from. And, and you know, the any environment where you have the, you know, when you step into a room and you ask yourself, how do these people get here and why are these people here? It's going to be interesting. So I just was at this thing called uh, Thriller Fest, big mystery writer thriller convention in New York City. It's really fun. I got to meet a lot of neat people. Thriller Fest is different than uh, like BoucherCon, which I'll be going to in whatever that is, October or whatever, okay? Thriller Fest is mainly writers. Most people there are writers. You know, they're people who are actively writing in the industry. BoucherCon's writers and tons of fans, lots of fans. It's a much, much bigger, you know, different environment. And, you know, if you go to Thriller Fest and you're going to get into conversations with people, it's going to be more professional side, you know, how do I adapt to this marketplace? How do I use social media? How do I do this sort of thing? You know, at about your con, it might be more like, oh, what are your favorite cozy mysteries? What's your favorite here or whatever kind of stuff. Each environment's going to be different. And then you go to a place, let's say Comic-Con, where 5% of the people there are really content creators and 95% of them are super fans, you know. When you go to places like... YouTube or you go to, you know, internet message boards or things like that, you get places, you get where 99% of the people there, they exist to comment and to have opinions on stuff. That is their output. That is what they do. Right. And, you know, and they get value by causing a reaction. They get value. They're only going to say something if they can make and have it affect somebody else, either a commenter, 
you're stupid. The writer, you're stupid. I mean, you look at you know, you look at comment threads like, look at ain't it cool news? Look at what the talkbacks have become on there. It is like the criticism of Harry Knowles, who you know Got is it. a complicated individual, but was a pioneer and did amazing things and built an incredibly great site. You know, and when what he did, there are people who go there just to make fun of him. They go there just to criticize him. It's uh, not a healthy place. It's no. not a healthy place. It that is where I go whenever I need some act right on like, hey, should I put in the effort to do this? Uh, hey, should it should I answer this email? Like I just I go to whatever the most recent Harry Knowles post on Anticool News and I look at the comments and I say, oh, my God, I need to do everything for the people that that gear, give a, a, a sliver of a rat's ass about anything that we do because that is is what happens when when passion goes wrong, man. And and you take a look at their parts of the you know popular parts of the internet. Like I don't go to the site Gawker anymore because I just had this epiphany one day. I'm like, it's a really horrible site. I mean, it's a really negative, negative. I mean, it, it just you know they just took down a post you know about a guy who because he was the brother of of Geithner, you know, and Timothy involved Geithner, you know, yeah. a gay little scandal. They put this guy and this guy who's not a public figure at all, yeah. but because his last name was with a famous person, they made it a story, you know, and it's like and yeah. it's this 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 need to criticize and tear people apart and all that, you know, and, and that's can, can can we real quick um uh I I I'm I'm gonna do kind of a flash forward of of what my pick is going to be. Uh, I think early on I mentioned uh, in one of the weird things, my, my pick being The Obstacle is the Way uh, or uh, Trust Me, I'm Lying by Ryan Holiday. And when I read Trust Me, I'm Lying, that book starts with essentially promising, hey, I manipulated the media to make, uh, to make um, uh, American Apparel super famous. I, I worked on behalf of Max Tucker uh, these are the tricks that I've done, but I don't recommend you do them. And in my mind is this bold faced, italicized wink. And then I went on to read the book and it wasn't until halfway through the book that I realized, oh wait, no, I think he's serious. I think he genuinely regrets the games that he played back in the past. And, uh, and I ended, uh, trust me, I'm lying thinking, uh, believing in, in Ryan holiday. I was like, I think he genuinely it believes that the, the fruits of his labors before were negative and that people shouldn't do it and that there's a better way. I think he genuinely has contempt for, um, you know, for, uh, uh, for, for, for cynicism in general. And then I read the obstacle is the way. And I walked away from that book being like, no, this dude's definitely a true believer. And he definitely, definitely believes that you need to shut up, work hard, and and make good in the world, and uh, and it left me, you know, very very happy. Uh, the reason I bring all this up is because he recently uh, has been very outspoken on Twitter in an anti Gawker way. Yeah, in fact, th this whole Gawker <laughs> story came up because he was the first person I saw trashing Gawker, saying this is this is what you bought, gentlemen. You know, hope you enjoy it, and um uh. It, 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 it was it was really really good and uh, uh, for for I, I don't know how to describe it without getting too deep into it but um, my my point is is that uh, uh, the whole Gawker thing it's fascinating to hear somebody the let me put it this way the angriest people I see in the Gawker thing are people who used to swim in those waters and and Ryan is one of those people who used to swim in those waters. And that is what's fascinating to watch him on Twitter be the loudest and angriest of voices against Gawker. Yeah, yeah. I, I and I, I sometimes I find that to be more about you know the the ex alcoholic screaming about the the the, the temperance movement and why it needs to come to America. Like uh, I I. I I think it's more about them and their own salvation than it is necessarily uh, the the best look at where online journalism needs to be in, in the modern era, or you know a way a true uh, weight of Gawker's soul in in terms of you know where they need to be. That that whole thing was fascinating, and and I think uh, what what it said it said as much about us right now the online readership of 
websites and news consumption and and politics consumption. It said more about uh, as much about us as it did about Gawker, uh, and mm-hmm. and uh, a, a hopefully it was a a evolution of of where we are and 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 what that means and what the line of a public figure is and and uh, it's it's even for Gawker you know for for Nick Denton, CEO of Gawker, he pulled it. Then his uh, his all of his writers, uh, which span over many sites, got ups- uh, upset about it because uh, it was not a decision by them. It was a decision by uh, by Nick Denton to to pull it. Uh, now, meanwhile, uh, unsaid amongst all this uh, is Nick Denton is currently in court uh, in Tampa, Florida, uh, by uh, Hulk Hogan for uh, posting a sex tape. So, what I am sure is in part factoring into Nick Denton's decision to pull the post is, uh, you know, uh, communication either directly or indirectly from uh, the, 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 the Geithner family to say, uh, listen, this is going to end in a lawsuit and uh, your culpability for it will depend on whether or not this gets removed right now or not. Uh, so, uh, like... I, I agree. I think we've gotten a little bit, uh, you know, into this specific uh, case as opposed to the broader element of of uh, understanding and reading what makes you happy and how that affects how you create art in on, on a larger sense. But uh, I think our consumption patterns, patterns, and and what we want and what we like to read about is changing and evolving. You know, and 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 it is uh, it is reshaping and, and to the point where, you know, the, on on the initial Gawker post when I first read it. Which, quick side jag, who would have ever thought that the next day uh, people in Ted Cruz's office would be, man, things worked out really well for us with this gay hooker scandal. Uh, You know, all the comments were, this is gross and weird and why'd you post this? And I find little sympathy with the person that you have made your lead unnamed source, uh, you know, to ruin this guy's life. Uh, and, and I think that was very interesting that it didn't, it didn't, uh, look at, Hey, look, here's a powerful man who is, uh, being laid bare. It was, this is gross. And I feel gross for having read it, but I'll be back here tomorrow to read whatever else you have to say and go comment and tell you, this is gross. That's mm-hmm. the, the, the problem. That's I mean, that, the cycle. That's, is that, that, that's certainly the motivation, but do you, do you think that's the, the, the reality? Do you think that, uh, that, that they are, they are experiencing, a positive bump in their viewership. Oh, I think that's, I would, that that post was certainly gigantic. It was huge, um, and, and it, it, it was, didn't. Why we pulled it was huge, and you know, and I think that it comes down. It comes down to us. Like, I mean, people are going to do what people are going to do. That's fine. Gawker Gawker can cover whatever they want. They have a right to do that, and they well, we'll legally find out. You know, do they have the right to air your sex tape without your permission? Just because you, you talk about brother. having sex. What's that? Oh. <laughs> We're gonna find out, brother. Yeah, that whether or not um, Lost Domania is gonna run wild. I'm on a real people. American. Yeah, and so, and and I, but out. I think that, like, you have to think about like, you know, every time we go to those places and we go say, oh, let me click on this, let me, because like I, you know, one day I had this epiphany. I'm like, this isn't my business. You know, when when you know Bruce Jenner made a very difficult decision and then decided that you know, listen, Olympic medals are one thing. He's gonna do a new frontier, and become Caitlyn Jenner. That's great. It's none of my business. It is none of my business, you know. And and you know, my my it begins with compassion. You know, every discussion starts with compassion, ends with compassion. It can be like, I don't does not compute whatever. But good luck to her, and and congratulations to her. But it's not my business, you know. I I you know I don't need to follow this. I don't need to know this. You know, this person made a decision, and for people who that's important and relevant too, if it helps them come to some conclusion about themselves, that's great. But so Take much of this stuff is just. Why should I care? Uh, speaking of which, my uh, seven-year-old daughter asked me on the way to Ant-Man, uh, essentially, it boiled down to her saying, uh, hey, Dad, what's up with boys You know, getting some kind of surgery and becoming girls and girls having surgery and becoming boys? How's that work? And then, uh, you know, and, and, I, and I, I, that was, it, was, it was fascinating to... First of all, I did my best to be as respectful as possible as I said the words I said. But there was another part of me sitting outside of myself saying like, ha, how are you going to handle this one, Einstein? And, uh, you know, and, 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 and judging myself as I, as I did my best to explain like, um, 
uh, well, you know, what does it mean to be a girl? And what are things that girls are into? And she described a bunch of stuff. Uh, like, well, uh, what does it mean to be a boy? And, bo and her definition of boys are like, they like to push people and, and <laughs> shout. <laughs> I was like, well, imagine if you wanted to be somebody who pushed people and shouted, and yet your body was didn't match your mind and all that stuff. Um, it, it was it was a fascinating discussion, and and at some I I, I don't know at, at at some core level I was so thrilled that uh, this is the kind of discussion I would never in a million years invite upon myself to have with a seven year old, but I'm thrilled that braver people than me uh, created a situation where this was an appropriate thing to talk about on our way to Ant Man and. Uh, uh, I, I don't know. I, you know, I did, I did my best, but it was, it was fascinating, just fascinating to see how much has changed. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I think that there are some conversations though that we still can't have because the way they're perceived though. So, you know, G gambling uh, man says, and then we watched aunt man. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I, there's so many discussions that I'm like, I don't have any skin in the game. So I'm not going to publicly talk about it. <laughs> I mean, that's fine. I mean, I, mean yeah. I, I don't know. I just want people to be happy. I want everybody to feel loved and compassion. That's my, that's my bottom line is that, is that, you know, unless you're a completely evil, awful person who murders and hurts people, that's different. I don't know. But, but, you know, I think everybody, everybody, you know, everybody's going through a little drama in that, in that, and, and yeah. I, and I, I get frustrated by sites that want to shame or do this or do stuff like that. Cause it's just, it's like, you know, what does it say about us when we want to go there and say, Oh, who screwed up? You know? Yeah. Yeah. For those murderers, they should find cold compassion at the yeah. hands of the vigilante aunt man. <laughs> uh, no. Uh, well, and that's why you should post on magic forums. Da 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 da. da. Wrapped it up <laughs> in a bow. <laughs> Nicely done, sir. I have a pick. Yeah. Go, pick go, it up. Go. Uh, my pick. Um just escaped my mind mm. um, is it is it name of the devil the new andrew main novel that my wife just finished and enjoyed very much no it was another one of the <laughs> movie i watched forgot well, I, oh, I hope she liked it good good um uh uh no i i have uh alive by our good friend scott sigler oh I heck yeah I no i just got that too yeah yeah that and I, you guys got, you guys have been uh you guys are like like the the best best of uh, new book bros and you it just it's great i love it <laughs> yeah you know when you write a book you're part of a special club no um, no you guys are great mm, I don't know. Mm. uh hey i got a i i got a pick yeah. uh i saw train wreck uh with amy schumer and or uh, directed by judd apatow and uh how about this for a pick um how about you make a comedy that's under two hours judd huh like, you know, it doesn't have to always be two hours long. This How is about, this is an anti-pick. This is a screw you to... I know, I liked it. I liked it, right? Uh, two hours. Long. <laughs> Just really long for a comedy. Full disclosure, Justin is a co-owner of Trainwreck and the movie draft. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, looked like, I mean, theater was full. <laughs> Happy uh, about all right, so my pick is uh, uh, my pick is tomorrow night. Watch uh, Penn and Teller's "Fool Us" featuring yours truly as he attempts to fool Penn and Teller, but he's not really trying to attempt to fool them because one of them might have been one of the helpers. Oh, come as on, wrote don't. The routine. We're gonna find out. Okay. I think it. Find out Monday on the CW. Hey, Ben and Teller's fool us. Will Brian fool Ben and Teller? Only the CW knows for sure, and they'll disclose it to you with words and pictures. Tomorrow, CW's Ben and Teller's fool us. <laughs> Andrew, do you have anything? You know, because here's the thing. Um, I was I watched like when I just like at Showtime was like to watch a few different movies, you know, and like I watched something like oh yeah this is cool this is a really cool thing I gotta bring this up on the next podcast and tell everybody oh yeah you know this thing that came out back then you need to check it out I can't remember what it is I don't know what I have this sort of BoJack movie, Horseman Andrew's movie pick, aphasia, season two available on Netflix now 
so I'm like I'm like actually clicking through trying to look at like all of the movies that are on there trying to figure out what was it that I said oh yeah that's cool I want to talk about was this it, uh, was it Smurfs I don't think it was Smurfs Smurfs too sure. Probably Smurfs, not the, Smurfs. The Smurfs do it was like an older like you know movie Snorkels. from like was it the Snorkels the sno- Snorks Snorks you know was it like from eighties or nineties um you know it was it was a film that was out in the, there there was a director of the film Transparent season one available now oh. on Amazon Prime boom ding 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 HBO all right here we go this was my weird things pick um Transcendence. Transcendence? Oh, is this uh, the... Uh, oh, the, the Johnny Depp thing. thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. A singularity thing, right? Yeah. So this film was directed by Wally Pfister, who was I the cinematographer. I barely knew her. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> it's a filthy joke. Keep uh, going. Yeah, got it. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'm going to throw something at you there. All right. So anyhow, uh, you know, gosh, poor Wally. So, uh, Transcendence is a movie that can't, you know, there was a little bit of excitement. Johnny Depp, he's going to play like a guy that uploads his consciousness to a computer system. And then, um, closer we got to it, you know, the trailers were like, "Eh, I don't know about this. And then it came out and it did not get like great reviews and, you know, I, you know, it's like, one of I can't wait to see this. And the closer you get to it, like. No. Um, so finally, I decided to go watch this thing. On it's on HBO right now. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna watch this. Let me watch this. Let me, let me see this for myself. And I love like on iTunes, like the comments were like, "There's some people who loved it. Like, if you don't like it, it's because you're just stupid. You don't get it. You don't know about the." And it's like, "All right, nerds, settle down. You're like not real nerds, anyways. You think you're smart, but you're not. That's not a if way." If you to were real nerds, you'd be checking out weird things every Sunday afternoon at yeah. 4 p.m. Central. Those- am I right? With those morons, um, but uh, you know, there's just that that angry like you know because you know people there pe- some people can't live in a world where people don't like the things they like. You know, that's an amusing thing to me is like you know I don't like I got I mean, be like I like this like ah, it's great. You know, I had a friend who saw a movie that I didn't like because I liked it. I'm like I'm glad that you liked it. You're wrong to like it, but I'm glad that you liked it. I don't mean I'm that they're judging wrong to you, like it. but I'm glad you have peace. Yeah, so uh, so you know what? I'm gonna watch this. I want to see this thing. I'm gonna see this for myself. And it is, uh, the 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 problem with the film, as I see it, is it's not really constructed well. You know, it's this thing where your things happen, then all of a sudden people are acting in a way that you're like, why did we all of a sudden jump to them acting like this way and this? And it's not, it's. Anyhow, that was problematic, and, and, I, and I think that was a big problem. But I said, you know what? Like, let me see where this goes. Let me get all the way to the end and get to the end of it and then go, okay, how would I – if I'm judging it on science fiction just in ideas, just in the idea of what I saw, how do I like it? I liked it from the idea point of view. I actually liked the idea of the film, the premise of the film and all that. I got to – I go, oh, cool. This wasn't what I was afraid it was going to be. You know, um, I don't think it was – I, I – I want to see what Fister ne- does next. I, I'm anxious to see where he. I hope he continues to direct and do this stuff because he's choosing. I thought he chose a very interesting topic and a very hard topic, and we saw that with Christopher Nolan with Interstellar, which is a film that is not without its complications and stuff, uh, but you know, nonetheless, uh, I would say that if you have an interest in the singularity and these other things, see Transcendence. Okay. Which, which, by the way, for for those who who are unaware, uh, Wally Pfister is the longtime Christopher Nolan uh, director of photography, and and uh, has been the. I was the, saying the, as you were making your rude joke. Uh, oh, I'm <laughs> sorry. Um, but yeah, he's he's great, uh, and I didn't see the movie, but I probably should. Uh, yeah, no. A, a, as a matter of fact, I recently signed up for HBO Now because I cut the cord again. I uh, really ought to do a TV show about that. Uh, but uh, but uh, but I cut the I'll board. be on it for you, Brian. If you do it, like I'd go on, I'd go on there tomorrow if you did it. Mm, right on. Uh, maybe you know what? One of these days, we'll see. Um, but no, I'd uh, do it tomorrow, Brian. If you ask. Okay, fine. You could be on the show tomorrow, and we'll talk about uh, amazing cord killing stuff. Uh, but yeah, since I cut the cord, I signed up for HBO Now, and it's funny because I signed up for HBO Now specifically for HBO originals like uh, uh, Game of Thrones. But it's awesome to have moments like this that, uh, you know, as I continue to watch 
with a true detective that I, that I suddenly remember like, oh, wait, they do movies too. And so mm-hmm. I'll jump in on, and I'll watch that. Yeah, that's why like I went and I jumped on the Showtime things. I said, you know, like uh, there are a couple movies that there were there that like, ah, you know, I want to see them, but I don't want to buy. And usually, I don't rent movies on online because I just I can't watch a movie in one sitting. Sometimes it takes me three or four sittings to make it through something. And so, you know, paying four bucks a night, <laughs> you know, over a month as well. So I just buy stuff. But sometimes like, ah, I don't know if I want to buy this. And then, you know, that's what's cool about HBO and like Showtime. Like, oh, there's like three or four movies that come out a month that I want to see. And if, the, if you're getting it for like the 10 buck price or 12 buck price, well, that's worth it. Yeah, sure. By the way, <coughs> there is, and I'm sure you guys will talk about this on Court Killers tomorrow, but uh, a, a school of thought that uh, the, that like cable package bubbles because of like, like cord cutting. We've always, that the, the, this might not be an, orderly uh, g- a gradual kind of revolution that uh, there there are some smart people who make the argument that this is a bubble about to burst and and these uh you know companies like Showtime and, and HBO kind of uh, you, creating their own you, you mean uh, when you say bubble you're referring to cable companies are the bubble not cable bundle and rights fees in general like the uh idea that we've seen kind of the skirmish wars over the past five years of uh networks wanting more and more uh as they always have for the past 30 years per subscriber uh as the pie has kind of uh even as the pie has sort of contracted we've seen you know those kind of fights uh and now the uh, the idea of uh, people leaving cable at a larger rate could very much exacerbate and bring uh, you know a, a large uh, economic rea- a harsh economic reality to a lot of the major cable conglomerates. So it'll be curious. Well, you look at right now, like Netflix had their quarterly report and they announced how many subscribers they have and they have 60 million subscribers 60 million subscribers and they are getting into you know and that's at their i don't know what their uh, with the the eight dollar a month uh yeah price or whatever so bundle sure you know, yeah you, you do the math on that and what they're making per month and that's intense i mean that's that's they're doing they're grossing Four hundred eighty million dollars a month. You know, they're a five billion dollar a year stream that they can then spend a good portion of that. Is now they're getting into developing their own original content. And what did we talk about today? You know, what shows did you guys pick? Oh, sure, yeah, uh, absolutely. Well, and keep in mind also, like I, I believe recently Adam Sandler did this insane like three movie deal, the eighty million dollars per it's movie. Insane for who? <laughs> I mean, insane for uh, the consumers who yeah. I have to now. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, yeah, that's a the whole thing uh, yeah. that we shouldn't talk about now. Yeah. So anyhow, it's yeah, that's a, it's a very interesting time because I look at it like, oh, like, OK, well, you know, if they're Netflix and Showtime and these things are sort of priced competitively. And, and I think that also it's going to start, you know, we have to start thinking about, you know, Netflix movies, the quality of the movies you get there now. There's just not a lot of great movies, but the quality of the original TV now is I think they made a very smart choice. Unbelievable. Yeah, uh, 100%. Remember when Netflix was going to die because of uh, the rights fees for movies? Dude, and and uh, I, I mean, I mean, I remember on Cord Killers, like mocking, full on mocking Netflix for their stock valuation at the time. I forget what it was. But but, you know, as I went ranting off, pretending I was a coked up Reed Hastings I remember saying, <laughs> "Remember when we were three hundred dollars a share?" Yeah, I'm Reed Hastings or whatever. It's uh, <laughs> it's amazing to see how wrong, 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 wrong I was, and how awesome the world is for it. You know, and cool. you know the the really exciting thing is that you know, given whether or not Netflix survives, which looks like they're very healthy and they will. You have Netflix and Amazon and other players getting into this game. The idea that, oh, you know what? The best content you can create now doesn't have to. I mean, like, we, you're, the best shows aren't on broadcast. They're on cable. Right. You know, and they're getting to be more and more. They're more online. The stuff this that people was, talk about. This was about. the first year no network drama at all came from, uh, uh, came from broadcast. Holy uh, cow. And in fact, For there was. For uh, Emmy for Awards, drama. Yeah, uh, the Emmy nomination. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
So you think about that. You think about that where, where uh, you know, when we, we, when was the last time we got excited about a network show that we started talking about, you know, and, and that's, that's, that's telling. So that's the exciting thing about Netflix. That's where the model has shifted. You know, that's where the model has shifted and you know, we'll see. It's funny to picture a world in which uh, broadcast television Imagine a world. ceased to be the dominant form, but, but instead became like defined by it's the safest, least, least ambitious of all the places. You know, wh whatever content you put on there has to be as safe and as milk toast as possible. Which is what it is. And I'll, but I'll tell you what's it's interesting, too, is we had we had recently Apple launched Beats One, right? And that's their internet radio station. That's the centerpiece of the Beats Network. And what's right. interesting about that, though, is the idea that as we create these little niches, you still want to have this main, this big flagpole that you can say, everybody look here, this is what's coming. Netflix, everybody knows Netflix. So if you say, Daredevil Netflix, get it. You name other shows, it's confusing. The idea of still having these central sort of things. And that's going to shift. I think that's very much going to shift. But uh, it's... Interesting because there is still that like Apple saw this, you know, for music, we still want used to be MTV was that was where you found out what was cool and new. And now they want to have like the world's number one Internet radio station so they can say, hey, want to find new music? Look to here. We want to control this. Right. Well, yeah. it's also Beats One is so fascinating because I think it's the first radio station in history that is actively hoping that you stop listening to it and start listening to something else on Apple Music like that. Like they hope that you listen to something. And you're like, man, I love that song. I want to hear that album. And then you start listening to the album and you're hooked into the Apple music ecosphere. And that's what I actually really like about it. It's just, it's really rad to just listen to stuff and just be able to be like, yeah, I like that. I like that. I like that. And it continues to tailor to, to, the algorithm to what I like. Yeah, to be honest, I, I actually think that's a brilliant strategy in that it, it gives you uh, the moment you open beats one, you feel connected to everyone else in the world. It's sort of the, the, the meta narrative is, Hey, this is what the whole world is listening to. Are you with us? Yeah, we are. And then it's like, now go listen to whatever of these things you really like. Uh, I, I, I think it's important to have, you know, I mean, the, the role of the DJ, I remember thinking, you know, as a, ch I don't know, as a child born in the 70s, growing up in the 80s, I remember the voice of the DJ not being an intrusive obstruction, but instead being my connection to what Music. was happening, right? Mm -hmm. and, and and I feel like Beats One can absolutely do that. Well, yeah, they do I agree. You know, they, they they there's a DJ interruption after every song. You know, they, they they're not like you see a lot of the stuff that has been built up on commercial radio of like, hey, don't worry, you get nine songs without listening to me. Like here's four songs in a row. Or you yeah, but Beats One feel it's content though. Like they opened up with a you know interview with Eminem and 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 again, there's been other DJs doing good stuff, but so much of what we listen to on the radio now is just people trying to convince you not to go to another station and yeah. trying to feed you the commercial message <laughs> Please and stuff. Don't and hang it's not. Up. I promise I won't be back soon. Yeah, where I, I, you know, and it's like that, you know, back in the day when, you know, we're old enough to remember radio and having that local radio station and the DJs that we like to listen to and the personalities and stuff that, that like, oh, yeah, and here's a new thing. And that's a lot of like, you know, I listen to out in L.A., I listen to a lot of, like, you know, Jack FM, which is, you know, pre-programmed, computerized, whatever, which is fun. It's a nice mix. Which, which, They're which not by the way, like, like Jack FM is literally modeled on the nonsensical way a random playlist works on your iPod. That is the stated goal of Jack FM. And absolutely. And I don't have to listen to DJs. I yeah. don't have to listen to DJs. You know, if I want to listen to, like, it used to be, like, in Florida, if I wanted to listen to... If I wanted to find something new, I'd go to the college station because I knew at the college station they didn't care. That's like they're not. They didn't have their general manager going. Listen, if you don't keep playing the top forties, we're going to lose our listeners. You have to do that, and that's the drive for most radios. Like, listen, once you play this obscure stuff, you're going to lose thirty to forty percent of the people because they don't want to hear this. They just want to hear, you know, right. the latest, you know, Beyonce or whatever. So that's what's kind of cool about Beats. You know, one is the idea that, like, yeah, no, we're the largest company in the world paying our bill, but our goal is to get you excited about things you haven't that novelty so and that's you know I, I think there was there was a really interesting sequence the first day i listened to beats one there's ebro from new york plays the kanye west jay-z song otis which has an otis redding sample to it then plays the otis redding song that the sample is from 
and then plays a song from a new artist that has a very similar sound to Otis Redding. And each time it was uh, unstated yet explicit that, hey, do you like Jay-Z and Kanye West? Because Watch the Throne is on Apple Music. You can go ahead and listen to the rest of that. Hey, maybe you like this stuff or you're interested to be like, oh, wow, that's rad. I like the sound of that 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 hook. Let me listen to Otis Redding. That's on Apple Music. Oh, my God. Here's my new favorite artist. I can listen to his whole album on Apple Music. It, it really is kind of a fascinating thing. And I, I think it's something that like I definitely mm -hmm. I didn't see coming when they were first were like, it's, it's radio. And I'm like, ah, whatever. Right. Well, and, and, and definitely, and, and keep in mind, this is coming from somebody who has yet to experience your experience, but, uh, but it seems to me like once radio is freed of all of the constraints of, of radio, basically, right? It's, it's a constraint free economy. You're not worried about how many people are listening. You're not trying to sell anything. You don't care about whether they stick around for the ads or whatever. All of a sudden, Radio itself is an advertisement for the love of music. Yeah. You're able to you're able to do some astonishing things, and that's you that's know awesome. You know whose brainchild the idea of doing and again, internet radio has been around. It's not like and people like well, Apple's claim like no. And, we and, and, and by, by by the way, if if we if we can pause real quick, uh, I, I have not experienced Beats One. However, I deeply, deeply, deeply adore Soma FM. If 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 you haven't experienced it, check out any of the radio stations from Soma FM. I lost four years of my life of the the moment in my mid twenties that I stopped knowing what the radio was playing was the moment I discovered a secret agent, a uh, radio station playlist that's on the Shoutcast platform uh, from Soma FM. It is astonishing and wonderful and amazing. So do you know, do you know who was the one that convinced inside internally Apple we should do Beats 1? I'm no. going to guess Trent Reznor. Yes, sir. He just showed up? Well, he's, you know, he, because he works with him. He's like a product officer. Dude, or he's something. he's stood there. Yeah. He stood there in front of the whiteboard, and there was like some image. There was a uh, like a, he was he was using Keynote, and he goes he goes uh, I wait, it, like there's a chart of radio listenership, and he goes I was up above it, and then he clicks and then he changes. He goes now I'm down now, in it. Down in it. <laughs> uh, it just went but, strobe light, yeah. and he just did this. <laughs> I just think, like, go back to high school and, t and I had my Pretty Hate Machine t-shirt and say, you know what? That guy, lead singer, he is going to work for the world's largest company in the world and help them, you know, pro demand divine design products. And it will feel right and natural. Dude, well, uh, yeah, and I just well, it should real, be. Real quick, too. I, you know what? Somebody who, like, every time she says something, I'm like, you know, she and her people are pretty smart. Taylor Swift. That letter she wrote when she was complaining about the free tier and saying that, listen, I'm taken care of. I'm covered. But a lot of these other artists, you know, these other people, if you're asking them to go, you know, 90 Dude, days without getting any compensation. Once, once once you let go of the idea that Taylor Swift is the actual person who's talking, once you view Taylor Swift as this amalgam of, of people who have all come together to create the ultimate perfect pop star and you accept her for the beautiful cybernetic organism she is uh, uh it's amazing and and yeah. and as, as a seven year as the father of a seven-year-old who's deeply in love with the cybernetic organism that may or may not be taylor swift uh i i think everything like she's batting a thousand man is yeah, there anything so she, she's not getting right she wrote an open letter to apple and apparently without her label's approval you know it's a, you know, it might be her it might be her manager who knows because she, she's a very smart girl i mean she's There's obviously fair, there is enough evidence to say that if 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 that was a collaboration that she had a very strong voice of course absolutely and then she's decided this is where the side she is it was a wonderfully well written in the sense that it was apple i love you we you know it was not this you guys are ruining this or this there was no it was it, it was classy it was such and i've heard people like hey look at the power of the internet no that's the power of Class in the hands of a very powerful, influential person. It was a very classy letter. So if you're at Apple, you get this, you're like, this is a person I can sit down and talk to because they're not calling me names. They're not calling us this. They're not doing this. It was this very, this is where we disagree. I know your heart's in the right place. And that's yep. rare this time. So often it's if we disagree, oh, it's because you're money grubbing things or whatever, you know. Dude, it's yeah. uh, Taylor Swift, or as I like to think of her, the T1000, uh, is the best. 
Uh, well, she's got a blank space baby, and she'll write your the, name. The, it would have been the Terminatrix, I think, from Terminator. Ah, TX, right? It's a good a, point. It would have been the TX. Yeah. What, just because she has uh, a right, vagina? Guys, Maybe I she do, identifies uh, as a T-800. Do you ever think of that? Jerk. Sorry, Justin was busy cutting us off. No, I, 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 was, I was making just letting you know that I got to All right, we, dusty yeah, trail. Let's, let's wrap it up. It's been good. after. Good chat. Uh, all right, guys. Well, if you're watching on DiamondClub.tv, I'm going to take a real quick bathroom break, and then I'll be right back here with the jury podcast, followed by the live stream for the WWE show. So lots more of me coming up right on DiamondClub.tv. Oh. Yay! Hooray! Sucks. Everybody shut up. I'd never Please leave. <laughs> it was still live on the air. Ah! Oh, doggone it. Um, hold on. 150719. Do we have a name for this one? Um, the name for this is going to be. Uh, it's uh Brian, I got it. Perfect thought. It's Got it. Done. You know what's funny is I actually pressed the mute button to actually not make moist out of my mouth. Moist noise out of my mouth. Um, YOLO swag so... 420 the podcast. Well done. Um I would say uh uh the the T Swift one thousand. I didn't say it was a good name. Oh, I, I actually like that. I, I like it better when Bryce is here to come up with names, and uh, then when they're not he does rare. All the work. I like it, I like it when he actually hosts the show for us. And oh, he's <laughs> can, can I can I, I I don't know if I don't know if Bryce would be horrified for me to share this, <laughs> but it's too good. Um, so uh, I think this will be okay. Oh no! Okay, great. So, um, so, okay, behind the scam, uh, Bryce went on a trip and he, uh, was on a plane around the time that I was planning to record behind the scam. And I said, well, why don't, you know, here's the, the footage. Here's, you know, what we need to do. Here's what we need to communicate. Here's what we need to say. Why don't you go ahead and like, you know, take advantage of your time right now and, uh, sort of half build behind the scam and he was like sure All right, hold on let me jump over um uh, and so he's like yeah sure whatever um and he's like he eventually hit me up like hey man so here's what i got for the placeholder it was so good i loved it so much that i kind of wanted it to be the episode just period and it was amazing so understand uh for those of you who don't know <laughs> Uh, Bryce Neshkom Castillo edits behind the scam, and uh, uh, this this is all him j with placeholder footage. It's behind the scam. The show dedicated to the show, dedicated to the show, dedicated to the show. But first, we have to announce our three winners of last week's book test: person A, person B, and person C. Congratulations! You're all gonna get the world's best book test ever. All right, guys, this week we have something very, uh, we have a, a hidden mystery of the ancient magician. Uh, check this out. <laughs> Where the footage of the trick goes. There's kind of some disdain for you there, you notice this? I know, I think that's why I love it. <laughs> he just rolls his eyes after like, yeah, and then Brian does this. <laughs> Exciting. <laughs> Not only do you get complete control of the deck, but it's seriously a untold secret for centuries. It's only been mentioned a handful of times throughout all of recorded uh, magic history and all the writings and stuff. You can control a, a single card, a group of cards, uh, in any sort of shuffled deck. Spectators can uh, take it, examine it. Uh, before he's handling the cards there. Uh, uh, that's uh, Jason uh, England. It, it will yeah, appear say, totally fair, quite, quite you, good. Uh, but you have full and total control uh, over the deck. Uh, you can learn it in minutes. Uh, 
uh, and use it in a couple of hours. Like, even do I still have beginner. my Ben and Jerry's uh, ice cream in the, the freezer deck, right the now? Deck, oh. 40 minutes of destruction from Jason England. Double check with John about that because that's what Theory 11 is offering. I don't know if we're giving them all the same stuff. Do I want a burrito? And you can get this now on Scam Stuff. But wait, X number of people that John tells Brian to get uh, are going to get it for free. All you do is go to <laughs> scamstuff.com and get it for free when we announce the winners next week. <laughs> Um, and then so this is the part where Brian kind of trails off for like a hot second or so. Uh, like, like if I want to talk about with the, the elephant in the room, this nose. We have a lot of white light here. That's not like a good bump up. That a little bit. Oh, that actually. Ooh, I'm over for Why not? Too much. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Isn't that the best thing on the planet? <laughs> uh, Bri Bryce, Bryce is a treasure. Uh, and Bryce is good. And Bryce is... Uh, Bryce is going to become a formidable podcaster himself. I can oh, my tell. God. No, 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 no. Bri yeah, Bryce is on track, and that's the only reason. Like, I, I, yeah, mean, I, I hope know. everything's fine. Because it's <laughs> it's that, that. It, we're entertained by him not being entertained by this because he's, you know, we're, we're willing to watch him be like, all right. <laughs> he really like, is. He's totally crying crap that he says about this thing. Da 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 da. Oh, this, uh, Sun so. Bun, that's literally. Uh, it's it's. Uh, uh, bleh, 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 bleh. I'm not gonna talk. Um, it's not on BBpedia videos. <sighs> holy cow! Bryce is awesome. He really is. Also, holy cow! This story, bro. <laughs> and then the dude afterwards it's australian like ah oh, man it's like yeah you know so i punched it back whatever bro <laughs> surfer mick fanning i punched the shark in the back that is the dopest sentence i could ever hope to speak out loud <sighs> look at the size of that fin yeah dude that's a, a monster giant erect terrifying phallus oh yeah all right, <clears throat> I guess.